make sure that the stream is actually live here before we get off on our on our um our conversation but we are here with the skirmish mod in age of wonders 4 i am walker and we're gonna be playing uh skirmish against ninju today so uh maya if if you're still around um so would say uh, if if you guys want to just meet up in in our in the same uh voice chat we can all talk together and then maybe break into groups if if it becomes necessary from a conversation standpoint but this is the skirmish mod so for age of wonders 4 if you're playing on steam um you can download this this mod i put the link in the description but this allows you to just build an army and fight. You don't have to do any of the economy build up. So here, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be playing on a format that we're kind of like testing and trying to figure out how it would work as an actual, like a tournament format for the uh, the community. And we're gonna be playing with um, a, a, an industrious build as Winsaya was, was calling beforehand, because we did get to see some really interesting industrious stuff coming out of uh, Zombie the other day, uh, where he was using Arbalest to just do outscene insane amounts of damage. We're going to be doing pretty similar things with Industrious in terms of trying to do something kind of hopefully busted, um, but it is going to be in a very different direction. So one of the things that we are going to be doing here is we are going to be playing with uh, a Dragon Lord, um, but unlike what we normally do where we build the Dragon Lord into being a dragon, we are going to build our Dragon Lord into just being a wall. Um, we're going to try to make one beefy boy as, as indestructible as humanly possible. And a core part of that is, of course, that we are going to be playing with Cold-Blooded. Uh, Ninju, I'm, I'm ready to, to rock whenever you are, but no rush. Um... But here we have uh, the cold-blooded as a, a key tag for us, for our, our beefy boy, because that is going to keep our morale uh, pretty topped off. We're also going to try to keep our morale topped off uh, via access to the Tome of Revelry. We're just going to be doing whatever we can to make our dragon as, as durable as humanly possible, so that way we uh, have the consistent access to the damage output here. Because we're going to be rocking with a an astral dragon as opposed to a shadow dragon. I think that we've we've shown a lot of like why the shadow dragon can perform pretty well in combat um, via freezing. But I think the Astral Dragon also offers some interesting choices in terms of the damage output. And because we're trying to create like a very durable uh, core for our army, and apparently there are jets in the background. <laughs> oh, oh boy, Walker, great stream. He's A plus. Uh, but we're gonna be we're re gonna be creating like a really really durable line, and we're gonna be trying to translate the time that we create for ourselves through having durability into value. And one of the easiest ways to translate, um, you know, like time into value is damage over time. You can also get healing over time, um, which is gonna be something that we're gonna build in because we're gonna have access to a scald. So we're gonna we're gonna have like lots of things that are going to try to utilize a longer, uh, more grinding type of combat. That is, it's going to be very, very different from what we saw out of Zombie with his, like, burst damage out of his Arbalists, and I think it's going to highlight, like, a very different line of play for uh, Industrious, hopefully. Um, and then if we if we have time after we are done with our Ninju fight, we do have a, another fight lined up with uh, with Maya after her battle with uh, Winslaya, where we're going to be trying to rock and roll with a, an interesting, an alternate build for our, our Barbarians. All right, um, so you ready to go? Okay, good luck, have fun. Thank you. Well, let me pull up your stream this time so I can see what people are saying about me. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, you're going to pull up my stream so you can stream snipe? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, stream so snipe in Age of Wonder skirmish mode. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the superpower. So the core here uh, for us of runesmiths and powerful evokers is going to give us access to a very powerful transmuter, um, which is going to be something that we're going to very seriously consider here. So we're going to do configuration, and we're going to do our presets, and we're going to do uh, Walker's Delight. So this is a, a nice little add-on add from uh, from Badox. So now, instead of having to go through like 15 different presets, we just go ahead and we, we select uh, Walker's Delight, go back to pregame menu, and we confirm the game. Dude, setting up is so fast now. This is crazy. Wait, why didn't it, why didn't it fire? Wait a second. Go back to your pre-game menu. Yeah, you can open up the reset. Confirm basically. settings and start game. Oh yeah. Yep. 
I did not click confirm settings. That, that was it. <laughs> All right, so here we have as our first tier one tome, uh, we took, I believe, the Tome of Enchantment. Uh, no, we took Evocation, but we're also going to take Tome of Enchantment. So Tome of Enchantment is going to give us access to, amongst other things, uh, the temp Spell Tempered Shields. That's going to give us a lot of extra resistance in this army because we're not going to use Tome of Warding. I think we used to, we've used Tome of Warding enough, um, and I, I kind of want to just see what other things we can get going. Uh, but we are going to go with the Tome of Revelry. As I mentioned, we're going to be working with Scalds. And then here we're also, because we took the uh, the Tier 1 Tome of Enchantment, so we have access to Copper Golems. And the fact that I, I actually do like... Oh, we have to go through the DLC menu. Um, I do like the uh, ability to resist flank attacks off of Tome of the Construct. This is something that is going to be like not quite as high value, simply because our dragon is not going to count as a Construct or Linked Mind. But I think overall the, the value value there is also uh, in unlocking our tier four tome or our tier three tome and we're going to take tome of transmutation so we're not necessarily going to actually cast um steel skin i want to see what uh we're seeing out of out of our friend in in ninju before we commit to doing that um but what we're going to do instead is we're going to just build a, it, it it's is it like letting you take three tier ones in a, a tier three no. Okay. No, I wanted to make hunter spiders, and the online database of Wildlife Sanctuary allows you to build mm. hunter spiders, but that is not what I'm seeing here. Yeah, you get three, right? The Razorback, a spider, and maybe the worm. I don't remember. You get like red spider, piglet, uh, vampire like, spider. Like, yeah, I don't think you. It's ever allowed you to build a tier two. Are you? Are you, you sure it says that on the? Tier twos. I have I have access to both races. Well, no, no, no. Like the tier two evolutionaries. The I don't think it's ever allowed you to build a, a hunter spider. I'm just looking at the tables database, so I'm gonna go for the matter. No, it's a Badak thing. It's only available like that because of Badak thing. It's not because. The no, no, no. But the the. Actually. No, because uh, Tome of Beasts gives you access to an SBI that allows you to build uh, animals in your in your cities, um, but I, it does not let you build um, hunter spiders. So if it says that on the the database, that is incorrect. Oh, I, yeah, misunderstood. Okay. Yeah, it gives you access to the the lower tier um, ones, but not the not the tier two evolutionaries. Okay, so uh, what are we doing with one beefy boy? So we're going to be making, as I mentioned, just like the beefiest boy. Our goal here is to get all the way up to Defensive Master. With Defensive Master on the books, because we took the Bulwark ability, we're going to be able to go into defense mode every single uh, turn with our, our dragon. That is very, very powerful. Um, and I think we're probably going to go in and take... Yeah, so it's impossible to get Hunter Spiders right now. Yeah, it's impossible to get them in, in um, the the mod right now, yeah. Uh, but we are going to be taking lightning weapons, and I guess we're going to take Sundering Strikes as our last option here in terms of uh, maxing our early game value out, because um, now we're going to take Defensive Master. So with the core here, we have a lot of extra magical and physical resistance. We have extra damage on our physical attacks. Uh, we have a first strike, which is generally a lot better against uh, melee attackers and against ranged. So our big weakness um, overall on this is, of course, like physical ranged attacks. So we could, I could see an argument for taking um, defense over sentinel here but we are going to be in defense mode every single turn because of de uh defensive master with and generally like one of the things that is a problem with dragons is that they're just a big they're a big target so they're pretty easy to hit no matter what um which it means that your your biggest weakness is almost always going to be ranged attacks anyway um but now that we've built our really beefy dragon here what we're going to go ahead is build out our tier, uh, our low tier units. So we're going to build three uh, Anvil Guards. Yeah, the reserves and stuff. Yeah. That's what I would prefer to do. I think it's just, yeah, that's what I'm used to now. I think it's fun. We're going to be reserving our tier four coin here. So what that means. 
So like just just to highlight for for you know the folks watching at home on on your stream once I uh, I I for instance am I'm gonna reserve my tier four coin but that means that I can either um, reveal it to be a tier four after I see uh, Ninju's army or I can downgrade it after the fact because it it functions as the same tool. Yeah, I haven't actually started my stream yet because I actually like to get all of this stuff. You don't want to. You, you don't like to show the first twenty minutes of people just clicking things on menus. Nah. Not this time. nah. Okay. Uh, but we we are gonna we are gonna hold off on specifically casting um, steel skin because I don't want to cast that in the event that Ninju is rocking with lightning weapons. And in the event that Ninju is not rocking with lightning weapons, then we are in a pretty good spot here. Now, one thing that we are gonna be missing out on is flexibility in our um, our frontline core. So we're gonna have to just drop in two um, copper golems and uh, probably one lightning uh, st storm spirit because I do think having one access to a charge strike is actually like pretty strategically useful uh, especially because we are not gonna pick up the uh, any any dragon skills on our dragon our dragon is purely a, a it has a, a lesser breath weapon a normal lesser cone attack it's very very beefy that's what the dragon is and it does it's gonna do a lot of damage in melee like it's not gonna have a, a lot of uh a lot of flexibility other than just smashing people but it's gonna be pretty good at smashing people um we're gonna drop in purging arrows as well so we might bring i don't know do i want to bring one do i want to bring one arbalist to disable enchantments um so that way we can get around uh keeper's mark maybe actually you know what yeah i think we actually do want to do that so let's take one copper golem um one storm spirit and one arbalist and this is spending our co our tier coins right across across the top so this is like where those things are coming uh, from um, the tiers, he is buying units. <laughs> wait what's going on can you reset the tomes my, my reset I can't get spiders. oh oh you you're just resetting entirely um, Not entirely I'm keeping the same pace wait Swapping some tones around to adjust. Do we just reset game? Uh, there should be one that's like. Oh yeah, you, you would go back to the config menu and then you would click. Um, uh, yeah, to reset the game basically. Uh. Should be one of the spells for that. Okay. Is wait. Uh, this took me back to tone selection, but it yeah. Reset my tone. So yeah. I, I what think the I hell? That once before. I don't know if there is a button in that menu that actually gets rid of the, the tone selection. I was doing some testing earlier. <laughs> nah, you can't do reopen tone selection. You have to actually do like you say config. So wait, reopen pregame menu. All right, so I did that and I clicked. Um, Don't click the continue game. Click the start game. Yeah, confirm settings and start game. There we go. Wow. It's still showing me with all of my tomes locked in. Currently on tomes five. I mean, like, I think I already did a reset game here. No, I mean, like. Oh, like, literally, just make a new, make a new, uh, a new session. Yeah. All right. Okay, 
is there a bug with the mod? Because now it's populated like an extra, uh, an extra arena. Like I have five arenas now. It doesn't matter. I don't think they're all. It just keeps generating them every time you open up the menu. I think. Did you, did you make a new lobby? Yeah, codes in. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna run that back and see. And... Yeah. Yeah. All right. So as as I said, we're we're going with an industrious dragon, but it's gonna be a very very different kind of dragon. The dragon aspect is gonna be kind of like suppressed, and the um the beefy stat stick aspect is hopefully going to be the, the thing that we highlight here by using a Defensive Master. And then we're going to be highlighting that even further, because we're going to be using as our Tier 2 item pack, because one of the things that we get to do in in this uh, skirmish mod is we actually get to like choose items in order to build our, our heroes out, and we're going to be choosing um, Tier 2 Miscellaneous here, because I want to run a, um, a Ring of Regeneration. Uh, we could potentially make an argument for a wind a wind barrier ring given the the weakness to ranged pieces, and maybe we'll swip, swatch it uh, switch it over depending on what we see. Uh, so configuration configuration presets and just light back to pre game menu and start game. All right, yeah, it looks it looks good on on my side. What do you see? Okay. Alright, so we are going to go with Tome of Revelry, and we are going to go with our DLC Tome, okay. the Tome of Construct. And then our Tier 3, we are going to go with the Tome of Transmutation. If if it looks like we can use a transmuter into the fight, I will bring one. Um, I think that they're pretty good, but if it looks like we can't, then like there's just too many you know pieces on, on his side that are in a counter. Um, What's wrong? I mislooked my affinity build. I can't pick the tier three tome I want to. <laughs> oh no. This is why I planned it out 24 hours in advance, because I hate when that happens. <laughs> uh, we'll take, I, I think, I think I did convince myself into bringing one Arbalist. I have, um, five stuff, except for the yeah. four. Yeah, uh, I talked myself into bringing one Arbalist. Wait a second. Did we not bring I, I need to, I need rune to reset my We did bring. Shit. Yeah, we did. Again. Okay, it's just not displaying the extra. Uh, hold on. If you. There should be an option for you to reset your own tomes inside your own menu. Definitely not. That is absolutely not what there is. Um. My question is okay, if you go to reset game. And then on the config menu, you change the number of tones so that, like, we're allowed fewer tones. What does that do if it doesn't reset our tone picks? You know? Uh, no. Alright, are we- do we have to host the game again, Ninju? I guess. I'm sorry. Alright. And this is why I'm not streaming. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like, I have mine actually mapped out, I don't know. It, it, yeah, it's sometimes, you know, it's easy to be off by one. Well, mine was mapped out the first time, but when I made the adjustments, I didn't take into account how that would affect my tier 3 availability. Okay, so definitely every time I'm hosting here, I'm getting another proliferating two skirmish arenas in my custom realms. Oh, yeah, uh, don't worry. That'll maybe solve itself eventually. That happens. Cool. Too. That's just a bug that's been there since Skirmish Mod came out, and the doc is aware of it. He said, yeah, it's just a thing that happens, and I don't know why it's never been fixed. Presumably it's too difficult for something. Okay, well, that's weird, but whatever. Uh, I, 
I suspect that it goes away when you like launch the game without skirmish mod, and then oh yeah, mod, yeah probably. So what I did is I took tier ones and set for the Alright, so configuration. Presets. Walker still Yeah, I just mean uh, confirm that. settings. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> After I, I menu and uh, items, start game. Origin. There we go. I noticed you aren't primal, I am primal, I'm okay fighting out. Okay, so we're working with Tome of Evocation as just a core part of our damage output, and then we're gonna with uh, Tome of Enchantment for a little bit of a survivability on our on our tier ones. And then we're gonna go with the Tome of Revelry. And we are gonna go with oh uh right, we have to go with DLC tomes. And we'll go with Tome of Construct, and right, then yeah, Tome nice of stuff, Transmutation. I, um, In the event that, that we see um, lightning damage out of Niju, we're, we're not going to bring um, that, and it looks yeah, like he's playing everything. Mystic, so we're not going to cast um, we're not going to so cast that. Yeah, but that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna have <laughs> other things that are gonna be able to hopefully provide good good defensive magical resistance because we have we have a bunch of uh, access to supports here. Uh, we have three, potentially four, if we downgrade into a, a second Scald rather than downgrading into um, another uh, Bastion, which might be something we do here, honestly. So we're going to bring in Compounding Defense. And the Copper Golem. And the Storm Spirit. And the... One, two, three, and Arbalest. And we were gonna go with... For tier two coins, we're gonna go with um, two Steel Shapers. Uh, those are just like very, very useful across the board. I think we're gonna go with a Halberdier. Um, and whether or not we wanna go with an Evoker, I suppose, I don't know, do we, do we want an Evoker? This will give us access to more magical damage but i i kind of feel like we're fine on on magical damage side so i guess we'll go with another halberdier so, um, this is generally good to have um melee guys going on and we'll go with a bastion and then in our stack. item forge like we are going to take all of the tier one And then the tier two miscellaneous, and then Ninju. Just to just to refresh on the um, the miscellaneous, each hero can have either one ring or one miscellaneous slot. So we're gonna go ahead and ooh ooh, we got some options here for our our second uh, guy. We have a seductive here. This is really powerful if we had other ways to strip um, stabs resistance. And fortunately for us, we actually do. So in our build, because we did take uh, the Tome of Enchantment, uh, a lot of our guys are going to be inflicting the, the like Sunder defense, and Sunder defense reduces status resistance, which means the seductive can actually become very, very dangerous for us. So we did get to see that out of uh, Winslay the last time that he was doing a, a fight here, and I feel... Uh, I don't. I mean, I think that probably you can cast whatever you want to. I don't. I think that I think if you want to hold on to a bunch of your enchantments, you can. But I think you probably shouldn't. I'm gonna. I think it's. I have like one thing that I'm holding because I don't. I don't know if it's gonna be worth it to cast against you or not, depending on what your build looks like. Um, if it becomes a problem where people are reserving all of their enchantments, then I think that we should have that conversation because I think people should mostly not save all of their enchantments so that way we're not having like 20 minutes of de dead time where like one player casts spells while the other player twiddles their thumbs and then waits and sees and then and then casts right so I can choose to reserve some of my I'm gonna choose to reserve one specifically because it's something with a big downside. I think if you have something that doesn't have a big downside, then you probably shouldn't reserve it. 
Like something like if you if you're playing with like Tome of Great Transformation and you're not actually sure if you're going to cast Whiteborn, I think that's reasonable because like minus four spirit resistance and fire resistance can make a fight go from interesting to not interesting pretty quickly. But like I I think against generic people you shouldn't be like holding back all of your enchantments just to waste people's time. Yeah, I need to I need to make sure to cast Wayfinder enchantment. <laughs> the most important. Honestly, yeah. Bring a scout again. And I think we're almost ready here actually to fight uh Ninju, except we do need to reset our our second ruler. Oh yeah, yeah. Make sure you bring make sure you bring your um your signature skills and actually build your ruler and your hero. That is that is pretty important. I'm gonna take Rallying Blessing for sure. Um, and I don't know about How about you? Yeah. I'm pounding defense. Oh, so your tier 4 option would be transmuter. Yeah, I have a transmuter as an option, um, in addition to some other... Yeah. Silver Rank Bastion is, a, I think, a good option. Oh no, the miscellaneous isn't filled out! They're they're missing tier th two things from the uh, the miscellaneous package. The tier two rings are not in there. Oh, bummer. All right. Well, we need to tell um, we need to tell Badok about that. That is a problem. That's that's a major bummer. That that's uh, that's gonna definitely make this uh, this this guy less of a a, a unit. Uh, what was it? It was Sentinel and then Defensive Master. That's what we did. Boom. I could I could play around and be like, all right, well we're fighting against um, Mystic, so we're gonna choose that, blah 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 blah. But uh, that's that's not cool. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna build the same thing that we were building before we before we saw what what Ninja was doing. Um, but now we do need to figure out what exactly we're fighting against. It looks like uh, he's got a Druid of the Cycle, um, Entwined Thralls. Oh, and Slither Hatchlings? Maybe we are actually going to bring... Um... Boy. This is such a strange collection. Ninju, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. This is... Right. This is really interesting. <laughs> Alright, I cast on this guy, and let's see. Alright, well, maybe we are going to cast Steel Skin then, because we don't see out of um, Ninju, like, an insane amount of lightning damage. He will have some, because he's going to have access to the extra um, the extra damage on his Slither Hatchlings from the Scroll of Attunement. So that is that is dangerous here, but Steel Skin does give us Blight resistance, and we see Blight damage over there. And, of course, uh, physical defense is just across the board going to be pretty good in these low-tier fights. So I think we are going to cast a Steel Skin, um, and then we need to build this other ruler, or this other hero here. So we're going to take Rallying Blessing, and we're definitely going to take a Restore here, just so we have access to that heal. Um, and we're going to take Vigor. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. If I take Tier 2 Armors, am I allowed to take Tier 2 Headgear? Uh, yeah. It, what, wait, if it's in the same package, if it's in the same package... You can get everything in a package, right? Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. is why, like, well, weapons are pretty good, usually. Tier two torso with tier two headgear. That seems like something if it comes yeah. in the armor set, that should be OK. 
Okay, yeah. Yeah, if it all comes yeah, on the same set, that's fine. Uh, I think I'm officially always taking armor. Yeah, now, now that I think about it, you, that seems pretty good. Pretty cool. Armor is pretty good. I do think weapons is pretty good too, though, because you do get access to the tier 2 shields. But we need to ping Badok and tell him that the tier 2 rings are not in the uh, miscellaneous set, because that, that, is, that is a big bummer here. Um, and I guess, I guess I'm gonna take Sundering Weapons into... I don't know if we're gonna take Sundering Weapons, actually. I might, I might just be happy with, um, keeping our units alive here, honestly. Wait, why do I have Tier 2 Rings? I Wait, you got Tier 2 Rings? rings? The armor set. Uh -oh. that, yeah, that okay, <laughs> that, I don't think that's correct. I think that, given that the Tier 1 Rings come in the Miscellaneous oh. set, that you should not be able to use them. I forgot to take a signature skill. I'm just noticing as I was like, and I, I, I think like, that's just a bug where we need to talk to to Badok. It's fine. I understand. We'll, we'll Rings are considered miscellaneous. Um, Ninju, are you okay if I take the the tier two armor to take the ring? Because I need I wanted a miscellaneous ring out of the tier two. I, as far as I'm concerned, you can pick every single thing out of the item forge as long as you obey the rules in your hero equipment, right? All right, cool. Like, it can be helpful if you only want to, if you're picking tier 2 weapons, then like, yeah, don't pick the other tier 2 stuff, because that's just yeah. going to confuse you. But if you change your mind, yeah. then just just take the armors, yeah. and just don't equip your tier 2 weapons. Reasonable. Alright, so we got uh, access through to the endurance training. This is a really, a really important thing for us uh, when it comes to keeping things alive. Um, the extra, the extra status resistance is going to be core for us because we we don't have a lot of status resistance in our army, unfortunately. Um, who else do we want to be getting a little bit of extra HP on? Maybe we'll get ten extra HP on our. Other halberd deer or arbalist. This is gonna be this is gonna be spooky either way because we're gonna be running into a, a fight against someone who's gonna be obviously using like a lot of. Um... Wait a second. Oh right, we don't have our our final our final buddy boy here, and I think I think we are gonna just take another transmuter actually, uh, or rather a a transmuter actually. Um, I think the the magical damage there is actually gonna be pretty productive. Uh, and yeah, I guess we just want the extra survivability on the, the transmuter. Yeah, I, I wonder how close we will finish our, our skirmishes, if they'll be actually, like... Yeah, are you guys about to fight? Because, like, I just, I just moved uh, Ninju towards you, but I think we have to pass one turn in order for us to fight. From what I can tell, I only forgot one important thing this time, so... Oh me. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's I'm thank you for that reminder. I'm double checking. Signature <laughs> skill, don't forget that. Yep, I got don't forget else. that. I got my I got my levels. And I didn't get the signature skill. <laughs> I feel like if we had a tournament we we'd need like a ref in each thing to remind people. Hey, did you take your signature skills? <laughs> yeah. Did yeah, that would be helpful. <laughs> did you get your gear? I don't see gear on this guy. He doesn't have a <laughs> Actually, that's that's not a bad idea, but I don't know if we'd need that for, like, every single round. I feel like it's okay if, uh, again, the early fights, like, what, whatever, whatever. What I actually think would have been pretty smart here that I forgot to do was... So this is... ...ended our turn right before the fight, and then just had to fight the next turn in case there was an yeah. that we could revert. And I just didn't think of it this time, um, but it's like, now I know that for any other scriptures I'll have today. At least I have that... So Ninja, are you just choosing your other uh, tier three here? Um, I've left that for now, just to upset you while I figure out all my hero stuff. Oh, oh okay, <laughs> gotcha. I know what I'm taking, though. We're doing cool. super growth. I'm seeing it now. Okay. <laughs> oh, Maya's doing super. That was that's that was what I was doing, gonna do against uh against Maya with my next build. Well, whatever. I'll still do it. No fear. <laughs> It, it's probably going to be a different super growth. 
But yeah, here we have set ourselves up with a really beefy dragon. So the dragon doesn't have like an infinite amount of HP, and so the amount of healing that we're going to get off this ring of regeneration, it's like 11 HP per turn roughly, isn't going to be, um, a, you know, like an absolute insane madhouse anymore. Uh, but because we have access to Sentinel, Sundered Defense, and Electrified, we're able to transform any sort of long-term fight against our, our dragon into something where we're going to generate insane amounts of value. And because we do have access to resistance and and uh, the bolstering and defensive master and bulwark um, and and sentinel. This thing should have a pretty good time uh, rocking and rolling against most tools. I don't think that uh, right now he's got any pole arms. No, it doesn't look like right now Ninju has any pole arms. So I think Ninju's biggest uh, win option here is going to be trying to dominate our our dragon with his lightbringer um that is something where like if we were if if we wanted to reset the the dragon into uh status resistance instead of magical uh resistance i could make an argument for it but there's just so much magical damage on his side um because ninju is playing with mystic that i i think we do need to i think we need to be playing with astral um affinity here as our as our aspect uh, and then hopefully just we have enough um, enough survivability after out of our steel shapers that we can we can keep the game going along because the the extra shock weakness does hurt but because the blight weakness is doing something against an enemy who is doing a lot of blight damage uh, I'm, I think that it's worth the trade-off I think I think if we really wanted to to help Badok, we could create like an actual map with uh, like teleporters and stuff that would allow people to you know teleport to wherever they're fighting and give them access to the the Empire Tree skill that lets you move for free and stuff. Oh, and, I, and I mean in combat, I can get to a lot of units and attack them. With oh my yeah. <laughs> oh, did you That's did somebody saying. bring the Tome of Teleportation yet? Uh, no, but I put. Uh... I brought a lot of skirmishes yet. <laughs> oh, good, good. But Arcor is mostly just going to be built around um, trying to slow down the frontline fight as much as humanly possible and then leverage access to uh, Sundered defense to, and whatnot out of our Anvil Guard. Um, and because we do have access to our, our Bulwark as well as uh, Spell Tempered Shields, our resistance isn't as low as it looks. It, it does not look, you know, amazing in a universe where you could have access to uh, Tome of Warding. Tome of Warding would have definitely been really, really clutch in uh, a fight against Mystic, but I, I think if you bring Warding every every single time you were going to get punished, we did get to see a, a really interesting fight uh, a couple of weeks ago where Ninju uh, brought in just like a rock and roll heavy metal only physical damage uh either barbarian or industrious build against Winslaya, who was trying to do like infinite magical resistance because he had access to tome of warding and all this other stuff um and it it did not go very well for for Winslaya. like if if you're specced into space to fight against magical damage uh and then somebody shows up with oops all physical you can die pretty fast you can die pretty fast first attack and i get but the uh, the steel skin is going to be meaningfully worse against against Mystic. There's just no way around that. One one bright shining example or, or counter example is the the Druid of the Cycle here, which we might be able to to get around. This is a lot of damage. Yeah, we do we do also critically have access to. Um, or a lightning torrent. The main thing that the lightning torrent is going to be applying long term for us is the uh, the minus two lightning resistance. So I, I, I'm not super worried about necessarily hitting um, Ninju's uh, light iron golem here, uh, even though it would be pretty helpful to do extra shock damage to, to tear that thing down because we have access to lightning weapons on all of our, our frontline guys. I oh, think no the uh, iron golem is going to have <laughs> some problems kind of either way. Uh, it's, it, that that is probably the it's a concession like you kind of do have to have um, some frontline pieces in order to keep your army alive uh, does he have does he have um, anyways 
No, he does not have the Tome of Evolution. So the Entwined Thralls here are going to be just doing really high damage in the form of uh, projectiles of Decay. One of the things that we are going to have issues with is that uh, Decay is going to shut down our, our regeneration off of the Ring of Regeneration really easily, and we do only have one Restore in our entire army. Um, so, like, I could see an argument for potentially bringing a, a Wand of Inversion or something like that, but I, I think overall this is probably fine. Decay, decay will be annoying against some pieces, but not not everything, because we can counter it with uh, regeneration here. That's a good question. Probably get an awesome map somehow. It might be it oh, might be like a that. wonder or something though, with like a, a massive defensive bonus or something like that. Defending player gets a fairly large advantage. Um, let's say attacking player gets to choose the location as well, but like defending player can veto. I mean, I th I think personally it should just default to like neutral terrain unless anyone has any sort of specific terrain advantages. Yeah, but like like a like a neutral flat. Uh, unless you really like want to fight on something, I prefer not to because I think that like the fighting yeah. on specific locations introduces too many movement penalties. All like, right, all right. Yeah. Um, oh, who is attacking anyways? Uh, I don't think we can determine that this turn because I haven't cast my strategic spells yet and I can't get to you. So he's got access to double soothers. Soothers are going to be oh he is, he does have uh, draconic vitality and and tome of evolution. So his, these guys will be um, getting their their rapid evolution enchantment off. Well, I'm glad that we brought one uh, one of our arbalest here because an ar one arbalest actually can do a lot of work against those guys. The purging arrows, uh, removing one spot positive status effect, can be helpful against uh, people who are trying to to keep very particular units alive. I feel like this is less enchantments than I was supposed to. Oh, because I casted a function of earlier, but I didn't finish. Okay. But yeah, we got we got we got a lot of a lot of blight damage coming oh, off yeah. of these guys. So I think okay. I think steel skin is pretty good. It's good. It's dangerous into into mystic, so it's not pure upside. But I think it's mostly all right. Mostly all right. All right, so right now it says that I have a slight advantage, but we haven't cast any uh, strategics yet. I don't have a strategic spell to cast unless you're going to fight in my domain and we're going to use Cycle of Seasons. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, in that case... <laughs> yeah, in that case, indeed. I think in that case, indeed, indeed. I think we might just uh, drop in... A bunch of damage. Oh, these are really beefy for Lightbringers. He's done a really good job of keeping the, the HP high here. What is he? How are these guys getting so much HP? I assume he's got, uh, yeah, endurance training. That's gonna factor into those. But that's a really high base HP um, Lightbringer. I think we probably want to get rid of those. I think those are the the most dangerous units available uh, against the low status resistance of our army. All right. Uh, it says now it says low risk battle, so I should I I'm assuming that means that uh, this the game thinks that I can win this without it without a hitch, which means it should be a, a pretty catastrophic defeat. <laughs> I mean, I you know. always know. <laughs> All right, you ready? To, uh, you ready to fight? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. Let's go. Attempting to execute. All right. So here we are going to jump in on this fight and yeah. Nice. 
I, I took a screenshot of it and I'm opening my, my folder right now. Someone needs to okay, teach you how to be patient. You were just going to. Fine. <laughs> it's so different. I, I know that now you're in kindergarten and so you think you're grown up ninja, but you gotta you gotta learn a little bit of patience, young fella. But I just expect you to tell me the truth when I ask you a question. Skill issue. You're gonna you're gonna have to learn not to trust your elders sooner or later. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that th this is a teachable moment. So here, our access to Tome of the Constructs um, might not be crucial, but might be enormous, depending on if we can get a, a really easy uh, big haste off, because that would be really nice. So here we have Ninju's guys set up with a lightning torrent on them. The minus three lightning resistance means that this entire front here on the side can be chewed up pretty quickly um, by any anything really. Um, and I'm hoping that means that what we can do is take this super elite right wing here and smash through this this very fragile uh, side. And if we can eliminate just like a, a, part, a part of Ninju's army, I think we can we can make it so that the rest of the guys, who are going to be admittedly very difficult to remove, so their hatchlings have access to the rapid evolution enchantment and therefore slip away. Um, but if we can get around those guys, I think we'll be in good shape. Uh, he does have a lot of damage in terms of Mighty Meek and, and access there, it, but because of the lightning torrent, uh, the entwine thralls are no longer like a, a lightning resist on his team. They are a lightning weakness. But our our uh, dragon is gonna try to is gonna try to rotate over there and help smash those guys out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. I I think I think that he could add an SPI that would let us build the rest of them um, that are missing. I I don't think it would want to be part of like the normal SPI line, but like. You get six population at start, so you can build a bunch of them if, if you guys are using them. I think that's my turn. One beefy boy. One beefy boy. Well, one beefy boy, you've got a you've got a fight lined up for you. The fact that we're gonna have to be chewing through all of these projectiles of decay without an uh, an infinite amount of extra status resistance is a little spooky. Uh, hopefully, this forty seven percent status resist reduction can keep a uh, can keep us rocking and rolling but because we we do have access to some pretty like crucial say, damage got, advantage uh, tools i i'm hoping that that'll uh, work out well for us what else, what else did he have in terms of his um his choices here powerful evokers and gifted casters all right so we're gonna see a lot of extra casting points out of out of ninju we also brought powerful evokers uh no i i i watch lightbringers and auto resolve uh pretty frequently because they're fun to watch because if if you like pachinko or or any of the slots games like those those fights can go really badly very quickly if your if your auto resolve does something silly. When was the last time you saw a lightbringer in a PvP run? Uh never. Gosh. Outside of skirmish, never. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't think I have. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna need to be aware of where these Lightbringers can go. I don't think there's any way we can actually prevent the Lightbringers from attempting to mind control someone. Um, but what we can do, hopefully, is we can set ourselves up in such a situation where uh, if the Lightbringer does try to do something, we can we can counter. Um, like if we can drop in a, a hindering blizzard on the, the Lightbringer, something that we do have access to here is a gigantic extra uh, source of elemental damage against these guys minus four frost weakness is pretty big but no matter who um we have moving up this way we need to give them we do need to get access to uh warding defense mode warding defense mode is is really crucial no matter what we're doing here um I guess you go here. It's not the perfect Bastion setup, but it's not awful. Um, and then we're gonna wanna get access to this 
rally and strengthened and fortune effect here. Yeah. Hey kids in, what's up? So we are here in a battle with Ninju that we just started. Uh, this is on the skirmish mod, um, and now what we are are facing down off of Ninju is his uh, his big core of Lightbringers here. He's got double Lightbringers, so that means that anything that we use against that side, um, which I do think is going to be the side that we're going to try to push on, simply because that is the side that we have a a pretty meaningful advantage on. We hit it with, hit them with a lightning torrent before the battle. Um, I think what we're going to try to do. Let's move Halberd Deers this way. Yeah. And then Anvil Guards here to just create a compounding defense and hyper awareness and bulwark uh, core. And I think, unfortunately, we can't get. Oh, no, actually, we could get a. We could get a support unit all the way over there. So, actually, why don't we do that? Why don't we get a support unit all the way over there? Our dragon is going to take a step back. Our ruler is going to, or our other hero is going to take a step over there. Um, and I suppose we're going to drop in the rally effect because the rally effect is going to be also adding, no, the ra yeah, it's going to add some regeneration. And the regeneration is going to prevent the first incoming um, poison and or decaying stacks and we want to prevent those things from stacking up too high and keeping our guys from healing so yeah I, th I think we're just going to accept it like this without rally on transmuter is that right are we going to accept a no rally on transmuter walker unfortunately there's nothing we can do about that it's going to have to be and that means that now this this steel shaper where can you go you can go here so our Steel Shaper can keep pushing forward. And the Steel Shaper is just really core for this because it is going to be getting uh, three extra um, three extra status resistance to everybody when it when it goes into its warning mo defense mode. Uh, is, it, is it worth it to put the Bastion here? No, I think this is fine, actually. We'll, we'll just go like this. And then you can't get anywhere, you can't get anywhere, you can't get anywhere. And we have that, we have critically that, that seduction just set up uh, to, to maybe turn this mind control game back on, on, um, on Ninju's head. And I guess we're going to hold on to the grant defense off of this this steel shaper here just so we can add in more damage next turn because we're gonna we're gonna do the uh big buff somebody gets access to plus five strength in next turn probably probably it will be the dragon to drop in and attack probably probably um on that note we are going to use this animal guard as a shield wall and i suppose because we are shield walling that there's really a lot less danger moving you up because there's really nobody inside range of um this except for those two units in the event that ninju decides to begin an attack with, by throwing a fireball in he can um but right now two units is just not enough that i'm worried about it actually you know what maybe we're gonna have these guys come this way does does Ninju have any large? He has he has a spellbreaker there, so that is that is an important large piece to keep an eye on, actually. Yeah, let's let's uh let's keep this flank actually flexible to try to punish the uh the spellbreaker in the event that it gets too close. And I guess the storm spirit actually probably does want to be near the uh the shield wall, just for the extra plus three defense in case somebody decides to get spicy. And this is, I'm assuming, not in range. No, not in range. Good, good, good. All right. 
So yeah, next turn I think is probably going to be the turn that we go in. Um, and that might involve us dropping in the haste everybody effect, but it also might involve us using fulmination or steel fury chant. We're just going to kind of need to see who is still alive on our side. We do have access to melt armor too, um, in case we like see an emergency and we have to like break glass to kill the light bringer in order to free our friends um, because this warding does not work successfully, but I'm, I'm hoping that's not going to be a problem for us. I'm hoping we've got the uh, the tools we need to make this this approach approachable, because you can see here that if we can just get through Ninju's um, core of, of immortal entwined thralls, because they do have access to the uh, rapid evolution uh, enchantment, and, and they do have a reasonable amount of HP, if we can get through those guys, then there is a really juicy core here. He doesn't have any pole arms. Um, and so, like, the, the natural most dangerous prey for, uh, for this dragon is currently not on the board and we do have 14 defense and 13 resistance right now so we do we do have a very very beefy boy and we will see how said beefy boy can actually contribute to combat considering that it's mostly just a, a lesser dragon breath beat stick here like it, it that survives that it, it really does not do too much um but hey you know 20 damage on a triple hit that's that's not nothing Especially against these these low tier units that can kill units in one in one round of attacks if we're lucky. Oh. I am making mistakes if that makes you feel better. So on Ninju's side, we have access to channel power and a lot of spells. So his ruler is a pure wizard king. And it looks like he's got double dark ritual. That's really interesting. Double Dark Ritual is pretty scary in a universe um, where we're not going to be able to handle, you know, like 10,000 extra units. Um, but if he uses it on our guys here, that would be randomly really good for us if he's trying to resurrect our boys. Because uh, they're going to have a lightning weakness due to the steel skin. Um, and assuming that our, our dragon is still alive, that means... My understanding is yes, um, but you do have to, like, you know, unlock it first. Uh, and it does have the issue of people just standing on the dead body. The Druid of the Cycle is going to be very beefy. There's, there's kind of no way around that. The fact that this has a two shock resistance and we did not choose to, op to hit this with the, uh, the lightning blast does mean that the high tier on Ninju's side is a lot burlier. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to find these guys because typically Lightbringers are still pretty pretty anemic in terms of their defensive stats, um, even with all of the, the things that he's built here with Astral Enchanter and defense training. Two and three is still not a lot. Um, and so if we can if we can kill those guys really really easily, those will because they're tier two units have a an outsized morale impact on the rest of his army. Um, and I, I'm hoping that that can be a, a big, a big swing for us. Um, and if not, you know, we have, we have actually an option here for, for a very easy setup on haste. So we would want to move our dragon out of the way, move, uh, our steel shaper up here and then here and then here. And then maybe, maybe some of these guys can even reach, um, depending on how much they're willing to walk. Yeah, that could be a that could be a pretty big haste, actually. Unfortunate that we're not going to be able to turn it into also the uh, the watchful spell, because that is also pretty good with with bulwark. But I think I think hasting our board is probably going to be more important into a bunch of ranged units like this, because if you can get your melee guys into melee uh, without losing too many units, then they usually do pretty well. Uh, and haste is pretty good at doing exactly that. Even if we have to waste, like, the first turn of, of the haste for, like, all of these units, because they're just participating in the movement over here, if they move here to get the haste for turns three and four, um, and then these guys get the haste to actually attack with, I don't hate that. Maybe we move, maybe we actually move the dragon forward. Maybe we move the dragon forward. Maybe we do dive. Maybe he invites us to to dive on his guys, and we dive on his guys. He's got access to double soothers, so of course, like the damage that we've we've started here on these units is pretty much cosmetic. He can heal that off very very easily, um, but at the very least, the soothers are 
still pretty fragile to, to physical damage. He did not take tough. And although Draconic Vitality is helping here um, in terms of adding a little bit of extra max HP, they are they are pretty glassy. Spellbreaker is spooky. This is this is I think his scariest unit here. Fortunately, he does not have access to the Necrotic Magic line, um, so he doesn't have Decaying on his Star Purge itself. But the fact that that thing deals double damage to uh, Magic Origin units means we we have to keep the Lesser Storm Spirit away from it. Lesser Storm Spirit gets essentially entirely disintegrated via one casting here off of that that Spellbreaker. Oh, well, I have to do this. Yep. So he started parting gifts, so now he has access to a very powerful heal. All of his units now, whenever they die, they will heal all of his guys' uh, 12 temporary hit points within two hexes. That's going to make chewing through these pretty difficult, um, but because we do have the, the Sundered defense ability, then like the longer any sort of melee combat goes on, the more that we that we benefit. We just need to actually like get the melee to to combat <laughs> in order for that to be a, a big part of what we're doing here um i'm hoping that i'm hoping that the the shift bolts really will will put in some work but a petrify here is is very very nice against these lower tiered units um being able to to stun at an even like a 60 percent chance into a bunch of of higher tier units here would be enormous i did briefly consider taking cryomancy as our our other um tier one tome instead of uh, the the electric tome instead of tome of evocation, but I just felt like we've we've done enough with cryomancy, and I wanted to test out like a different elemental type um, that leaning into the the dragon, especially because it does have that interaction with our dragon breath, um, can be pretty good. Yet, yeah, command reposition, chant, command, those are all just absolutely bana bananas, frankly. Like, here, because we're not playing with a, a Wizard King, we can't do the truly broken um, thing that you can do with Construct, which is both, right? Uh, where you, you get to move everybody into position, haste them, move them into, like, really into position, in, into position, and then uh, throw Watchful down on everyone after they've they've gotten out a big round of attacks. Um but we'll we'll see. I like I think I think just getting a haste alone is gonna probably be a, a pretty big deal for our front lines uh damage output against these guys. Especially that iron golem. If we can get something to just start attacking the iron golem, I feel pretty good. Um the only downside here is that we do need to be very wary of these these uh heroes of his. The access to these big AoEs means that if we clump too much without actually producing damage, we're in a lot of trouble. Looks like he's already begun a heal on this Lightbringer. Yeah, three counterattacks via the Watchful is absolutely bananas. Yeah, the very, very good. Um, if if we get an opportunity to use it here, that's really good for us, uh, simply because we, we do have the, the Sunder defense, and so the more attacks that you take, the better. And so uh, anything that gets you extra extra retaliations is, is pretty nice um only downside is that we do have we do have watchful on a good number of our units because we are playing as industrious in this fight um but that's okay that's all right is he close enough that we can no oh, he is getting close enough that we can do that well if if we have an option to um make this person have strength in five by dropping in a bolstered defense and then uh and then maxing your damage out i think i'm gonna go for that because that would be pretty strong we'll see we'll see where those guys are we'll see where everybody is actually because this this is also a, a potential open spot here with this um spell breaker with only four physical defense if we could if we could haste this guy this halberdier to drop onto that spell breaker and get double attacks off that that could be pretty good that could be pretty good Let's see where these guys are. That's this is this is the this is the trap card. So no matter no matter where we can go, we can go with hindering blizzard, and then the turn after that we can go with seduce. So I guess we probably should have just used rallying blessing on turn one rather than um, not using it and moving around with a uh, Gunilda. But I guess getting getting Gunilda beefed up probably is not going to be a bad thing. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good. 
Yeah, anytime Winslea says I took too long on that turn, you gotta take a drink. <laughs> and we have Song of Carnage. That is that is gonna be actually pretty nice for us in terms of uh, our damage output here for our, our guys. Man, uh, this is just, it's, it's so much value potentially to set up for this haste here. Um, where can the Spellbreaker go with a Star Purge, actually? Because I, I think that's going to be the, the crucial thing here. Um, no, so most of the sources, one of the strongest things about Mind Control is that basically the only way to get rid of it is to kill things, uh, to kill the, the unit in question that started um, the Mind Control effect. So you have to be really careful uh, in, that, in that universe for that, or in this universe for that reason, because um, we are seeing double mind controls over here, but because because Lightbringers are still relatively fragile, yeah, that is that is what we're gonna do. Um, that That is hopefully what we're gonna do. They're, they're a lot more dangerous than these sort of big, like, low tier PvP skirmish fights, um, simply because you do have access to the ability to, to use them a little more efficiently than the, uh, the auto resolve would. The game is out of sync. How? We're on, like, no. turn three! We've only been moving no. around! <laughs> no. Please! Um, it... Where is it? I... Wait, no, 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 wait. It might just be replaying everything. It usually does that when do you I, load in. Do I click exit game no, just s click... F like super fast four back four times playback speed like just stay in the fight and click, so click playback reload. speed okay. yeah click reload yeah um and it looks like yeah it, it worked your everything seems to be in the right place my internet just did a thing too okay cool does that look does that look correct to you yeah yeah everything's good as long as i don't have to replay the turn i'm fine yeah i don't i don't think i don't think that's gonna be an issue all right, so here we have access to a hindering blizzard on those three units. Now you'll note that right now um, it's not doing too too much against that Lightbringer, but that is due in part to the fact that uh, Ganilda the Fleet-Footed does not have five strengthened. In fact, we'll see here literally zero strengthened. So what can we do to fix that up before we uh, before we like chuck a bunch of damage at these guys? So we're gonna do bolstered defense. So now we have. Oh shoot, I targeted, uh, did I target the Scald for the bolster defense? I did, I targeted the Scald for the bolster defense. Oh no. All right, well, what can we do to increase our damage output then instead? Oh God. I guess we, we still have the, the two strength and two fortune off of that. That's still, that's still useful. Um, Yeah, that's okay actually that's still that's still plenty of damage so what we, what we have what we do have access to here is the song of carnage so the song of carnage is going to give us a uh, two strengthened and two fortune to all of the units that are adjacent to it uh, and i think what that's going to mean in this case is here and here and here and we're going to give up on the the haste on this side because I don't I don't know if we're gonna need it here. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and strengthen and fortune. And now we're at that. So we have uh, one bolstered defense on you, one regeneration. Boy, yeah, actually using the the rallying blessing on the first turn would have been really really good because then we'd have two extra things that we can shred with steel fury chant here. But I think I think still doing one steel fury chant makes sense unless we can fulminate kill no no fulminate is not going to do it there so let's uh yeah let's 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 do some uh let's do some hasting i guess can we still can we still move everybody in a a way that we can set up a good a good haste line i think we can yeah in fact the haste line is still exactly the same. Just how we drew it up. Yeah, this is this is exactly what we wanted to do. So where where is this out to? Uh, it's out to here. So anyone who's going to be hit by this this uh, spellbreaker is going to lose the haste and the strengthened effect in the event that they're still on that side. So what we're going to need to do is make sure that anyone who is like 
this direction is kind of hooked f as far away from the spellbreaker as possible. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. Can the spellbreaker hit those trees? No, the spellbreaker cannot hit these trees. So we're going to move this storm spirit back and defend. And unfortunately, these guys are too far away to actually hit the uh, the haste. That's okay. We'll still get a haste on most of that side of the board. And critically, an extra stack of strengthened. All right, so now we're going to do a lot more damage um, with this hindering blizzard into those guys. Good. Uh, and we can try to kill that Lightbringer um, with just this transmuter. Maybe we can get two shots off if we move out of the way. Yeah, we could get two shots off from here, actually. That's pretty reasonable. It's lightning weakness on that side. I don't hate that. Gonna hit. Bam. All right, good. So we got one... One of the uh, the mind controllers is gone. Now, the other two. What are we going to do about the other two? Killed a guy. What this happen? I did. I killed a guy. Congrats. I guess I'm going to use the anvil guard to just guard the flank right there. Because you're going to be... Yeah, you're gonna be over there. Kind of no matter. Uh, no, it it did. It's just that I got I got pretty close, so I was a, a 65 shot on those. Um, and then I got I got a crit. Cause I got some crits going. And then I I suppose that this uh steel shaper is just gonna provide some extra warding to the rest of this group here. Because I do think that having a little bit of warding on, on these most crucial pieces of our, our army on this, the most dangerous of turns, is actually probably pretty important. Um, and the, that warding slot is still outside, so we can go here with this steel shaper. Um, and then we'll pull this anvil guard. Was, where was this? It was like right outside. Yeah, so... Any, anyone we stack um, adjacent to here, this needs to be like the outside line for us. Uh, and it looks like I don't think we can get in there, so we're going to have to just pull everybody back. And now if he really, really wants to uh, re like use a Spellbreaker on one unit, he can. Um, but if he doesn't do anything about these units over here, then we're going to be able to, to probably do a Cascading Command reposition next turn. Uh, and yeah, I think that's just one unit as the initial peel off, but I don't, I don't hate that. That's, that's fine. One unit, that is fine. And hopefully the two magical defense doesn't get that anvil guard obliterated against mystics. No, I don't think so, Walker. I don't think you can say hopefully in that circumstance. I think you know they're going to get obliterated if that's what you do. So actually let's move, um... Let's move this anvil guard back just a little bit. No, no, no. Stay back. And then uh, this halberd deer can move back to here. And then the halberd deer at least has like slightly higher overall stats, um, and so isn't as likely to get completely dumpstered um, in the event that somebody gets close enough. Yeah. So now, now we're really clumped over here. So this is reload. <laughs> All right. Are you guys having to reload after every turn? Uh, maybe. I definitely had an, an, an issue where my internet dropped because there was too oh, much Oh, now happening. I have to reload. Excellent. I mean, at least it, it is recording the turns, so it's not like we're losing anything. It's just slower. Yeah, it's, it's definitely better than what we've seen in the past. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, kids, and I think that the desyncs this this is a lot worse than it sometimes is um 
Now, the, obviously, the haste for us, uh, because we have a dragon ruler, the haste is not going to be applying to one beefy boy. And so that means that our, our uh, big Dagron is not going to be as big, big damage as it is sometimes. Um, but here, if these guys can can survive this round of attacks, then I think I think we're going to be in good shot, uh, good good place. Vine prison is annoying, um, but not catastrophic. We've got we've got tools to disrupt vine prison. We have anvil guards that can do a bunch of damage. Uh, were there there are open spaces in there? I don't know. What the shit, man. Luck, man. It does. It just knows. It's like gotcha. Yep. Yep. We are. I have been having a pretty bad string of ninja luck in my online video gaming lately. Hey, you got me last time. Here too. I'm, well, it, actually, that last one it was hard to say who won. Hard to say who won. There was. A... <laughs> There, there, there were, there were, there were units alive on one side at the end of that fight, Winslayer. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. So hopefully here the uh, the resistance core that we have on this east side is just like too much. Um, I'm what I'm really hoping is that the ninju like commits to fighting us here. If he's if he's very clever, I think which I think he is, he might just opt to pull these guys back because um, that is like our our pretty obvious target for us. But even if he does, unless he pulls everybody back, um, we're gonna be in a position where we can drop in a petrify, and that'll open up like a big space for some of our units to get in and do some work. Hopefully that'll include our our dragon dropping in and, and doing a, a breath weapon because now we do have the three fortune. So all we really need to to make this thing pop off is hit it with uh, one steel shaper uh the strength from steel and that'll turn those three defense because it does have three bolstered defense here into three extra stacks stacks of strengthened um and that's also just like burst healing that that can make the the dragon come back from the edge But I think I think we have enough of our buffs and stuff down uh, that kind of no matter what we're doing next turn we're, we are going in. Next turn might involve us like clearing this this uh, vine prison with this anvil guard and then using the rallying blessing on these units who have been desperately hung hungry for a rally for a little bit because uh, they they do deserve it. Extra extra bolstered resistance against against Mystic is is very good. But we do have enough defensive tools here on this side that I, th I think that these guys are okay. And he doesn't really have, Ninja doesn't really have a lot in terms of uh, mobility. Like the biggest mobility he has is the Spellbreaker, which is very powerful and very scary, but he does only have one of them. And if he's not careful um, and, it, and we can do something like get a, a taunt on it with an Anvil Guard, then things could go very badly for that Spellbreaker really quickly. Wait, did you guys you guys claimed victory already? Oh yeah. We I have killed fire. one of Ninju's units and now and now and he has cast a spell. <laughs> I got rolled. So I on my very first combat turn in uh, Walker, I was able to stun two units using Tome of Amplification on one of my Inquisitors. Unfortunately my second Inquisitor wasn't able to get the position because I don't have a tier four. Uh, oh yeah. And then yeah. I also got my summon elemental was a frost elemental, which is nice. Oh I also god. Three frost elementals, which I sent forward. And with my slithers, I was able to stun. Well, not with my slithers, with those guys, I was able to stun uh, another, I think, four units. Oh, she literally lost six units actions on her second turn. That's yeah, that's, that, is, that is pretty rough. And I actually think Tome of Amplication. It, it's probably in general worse than getting the cold dark guys and and um, flash freezing multiple armies, but I actually yeah. really like the way the tome of amplification is just generally going to be easier to apply. Yeah, if you have if you especially if you have skirmishers, then uh, tome of amplification is is really really interesting in this format. I think you, obviously you can still use it with other things, but I I think that's probably the the thing that I've seen the the most value out of. 
So one more turn we can use the Song of Revelry again. These guys are going to have to just endure with a little bit of damage. Yeah. I'm not sure how I want to do my stream. <laughs> nah, you are welcome to commentate on that. Uh, I think I think when say it means the the literal mechanics of like we are currently in a battle. I guess I could stream it on like Discord, and then you could. Watch Walker's YouTube stream. Yeah. 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 It does feel a little weird you're capturing somebody else's YouTube to put on, like, say, the YouTube. <laughs> oh, for I mean, it, a little bit, but I if you're providing, if you're providing value and commentary and it is transformative, then is it not its own is work? Is it transformative? What? what is it transformative? Is it transformative? <laughs> from Winslay's stream that they wouldn't get from just going to your yeah. stream. Yeah, that's the... That's well, the on Winslay's stream, he has, there. like, a different art, and there's probably some different words in the descriptions if Winslay remembered a write a description for the live stream. My face is here. My face is here. It's beautiful. And his face is there, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Transformative artwork. Your face. Yeah. Your face. Face. Is what's gonna make this all worth it. I'm a commentary and something. So yeah, this Entwine Thrall does still have its uh, slip away. Both of both of these guys here have slip away. So it's not like this is just a, a free shot. In fact, I, I feel pretty confident that yeah, he's gonna just be moving in a sec. Oh! Not sacrifice. He's gonna try to go in and cycle Zen. Where is that? Where is that Druid of the Cycle going? I mean, the, so the the thing is that this Lightbringer isn't really technically permanently dead until we've removed the Druid of the Cycle from the board. Because at any point in time, this Druid, it once it has the uh, the the restart the cycle ready to rock, um, he could use the Ninja could use that to bring the the, the Lightbringer back. Um, which could be pretty dangerous depending on where it goes. Um, but I think I think what we need what we need to see here is how how quickly and with what few resources we can remove these pieces. Because um, really, what he's trying to set up for here, pretty obviously, is is like a spellbreaker to kill whoever goes in to try to kill those uh, those little lo low tier units there. But he doesn't move the spellbreaker in to threaten these guys in the the tree line. Then the our our reinforcements like might literally just spend the entire turn clearing out these uh these vines, and then maybe having the arbalist take a shot at the uh, the slither hatchling because I think we can do that from outside of the magic range. Yeah, I think we can do that from outside the. It might have a low accuracy, but I think we can. I think we can make that shot happen, assuming we want it. I think I think the right thing for him to do would be to to just like try to overwhelm those guys because then we kind of have to redeploy into the middle um, and into all of his his giant AOE attacks and try to chew through these pieces as quickly as we can. But if if he rotates this way instead of this way, uh, I think that's all right for us. Yep. Okay. So the iron golem is heading in. As is the Slither, trying to take out this Copper Golem. The Copper Golem mostly just being a, a hasted shield wall piece that's getting blasted. Uh, not not too much not too much survivability left on this guy, given that we only have one restore, and I think we probably need to save that for uh, the beefy boy in case it gets he gets decayed. Well, maybe maybe. I mean, we got we got some choices in terms of of healing. But I wanna, I wanna see where these guys are. That's what I wanna see, because these pieces are obviously sort of like a pseudo trap. The, um, the iron golem, if we can't cancel the defense mode, is gonna be way too hard for us to, to chew through. Hmm. And at least our dragon or our uh, other hero does have. The extra strength, and so although yes, we could do this or we could do this. If it turns out that we're in a position to just charge in and kill something, I right now I've killed one piece and and he has not killed any. Um, but this copper golem is looking pretty bad, and he does have a druid of the cycle on the field. So like the unit that I've killed, he could potentially bring back. So so far, kind of nobody. How can I see what my unit? 
able to attack something and you have crit chance, I think it lists it when you do the detailed mode. I, I think I have it set to I think default. it's control is the default. I know. I could have sworn when I was critting, you were saying crit chance 20%. Um, are you sure you I have mean, crit chance? He is oh, artificing, you know so yeah. Uh, no, 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 that doesn't apply to these magic attacks. So I might not, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you don't have morale and you don't have fortune, you might not have any crits there. Damn. Okay. Wait, so are you telling me that the thralls that he has there are not getting crit chance for some reason? No, his his magical attacks on his druid of the cycle and stuff. Oh, I see. But I, I think that's correct. Where's this druid? Can you click on it? The druid of the cycle? It it's not a, a magical unit, it's a support unit. Um so it, it doesn't get access to the uh the Tome of Artificing. It's not oh, the right unit tag. So who exactly we heal and how is uh, is actually going to be an important choice for us next turn because we do have both of our, our steel shapers here with uh, with their strength from steel set up. I don't think we have... Yeah, we don't have the grant defense next turn, so we're not going to be able to get any extra healing on the copper golem unless we use our, our own um, rally for that. But that might be... Oh, oh. Yeah, he got it. He got it. Uh, he got the cooldowns reset on the Druid of the Cycle, so now it, it can it can act. It can do its dragon thing. Yeah, that that is going to be the question if it survives this turn. So we did unfortunately already use our um, our our lizard, so that means that that is not an option for us. But we do have here access to the petrify. That could be pretty big, um, depending on who we drop it in on. Probably something like that, because I don't think we're gonna see the transmuter doing some stuff over there. This, this, uh, I, I, it's such a shame that, that you're not actually in this fight with Winslayer, because the the dragon ruler is a very silly dragon ruler. You know how many you know how many dragon skills I have on this thing? Zero. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you ask that question, it can't be all. <laughs> Zero. This dragon is. Warfare. That's pretty cool. That's pretty. <laughs> it's a lot of, a lot of. That is one beefy boy. <laughs> is one beefy boy. Seems like something that you thought about in advance, but I can't remember. Did you make this one today? Uh, I made this one like this morning, like before we before we jumped in on it. I, I said to myself, I, I said, I, I, when you were talking about, like, I bet Walker's going to bring Industrious and do something silly. I, I was planning on bringing Industrious and doing something silly, but, like, kind of the exact opposite of, of uh, zombies, zombies' silliness. Yeah. Hopefully, at least. Industrious is good. It's really good. Yeah, it's a great shell. It's got a lot of survivability. It's got a lot of interesting tools in terms of, um, like, potential for either damage in or damage out the thing about industrious is it isn't so good that i'm like i hate it, it i don't want to play it i i still enjoy it which to me signals that it can't be like stupid broken and make me feel like i i'm, I'm like cheating because yeah way, when i use mislings that's how i feel and like i did choose the one that we're playing tomorrow a long time ago and i have a feeling this is going to be very obnoxious yeah, yeah, mislings are, are pretty spoodily. No two ways around it. So who's our... What's our spell going to be, actually, this turn? What is our spell going to be this turn, actually? I don't know. Because we do want to... We, we want to do some damage to the Spellbreaker and potentially the Druid of the Cycle as well. Um, if we can get our dragon to, like, stand next to the Druid of the Cycle, that could be pretty good. Especially if we can get somebody all the way through to there, but I guess, you know what, we probably aren't going to be able to prevent flank attacks coming in on the dragon, so just stand standing here is probably the best bet, and then breath weaponing onto those guys. Um, but if we're going to do that, I think we might want to drop a fulmination into here. That might be, that might be the, uh, 
the right route. We have, we do have a melt armor. That is another, another really nice option here. Uh, no, he, oh, he cheated. Oops. Um, yeah, you used, you used over channel for the same spell. It's easy to do. Yeah, it, it's okay. Don't, don't try not to do it. It, it. I think it is a good rule, but it's not something we red flag, like red card people on, because that's dumb. Of all the spells to do it, I think Living Vines is one of the, I don't know, I, 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 in certain situations I could be pretty, pretty annoying. Yeah, it could be pretty annoying, but I, so, like, it's okay. I, I lost out on a buy. This is recompense. <laughs> so here we buy. can drop in a what melt armor and no, do, um... Fire damage. The fire damage, of course, is going to do a lot better against the Druid of the Cycle than lightning damage would normally. Um, the lightning damage would, of course, do a lot more against the Iron Golems, but because we're getting three Sundered defense into an Iron Golem, I think this is actually worth it for us. So here we're going to drop in with our beefy boy. Yep. We need to clear the um, zone of control problem for the transmuter, so that way the transmuter can use its petrify, but we also kind of need to heal it. So what are we going to be able to do to help that happen? Um, I mean, I guess we could actually... Let's see. I think here I'm going to see our Anvil Guard run in and use a taunt on the uh, the Iron Golem. I think that's pretty good value because it's going to defend defense mode the uh, the Anvil Guard, which is going to give us, you know, even more de defensibility on the, the Beefy Boy. Um, and then I suppose we have another taunt here and another taunt here. So we need to do we need to do something to reduce the damage output out of that uh stupid spellbreaker. I don't think we have I don't think we have anything here that's Is there a reason why Oh shoot kind of um, yeah, I oh yeah, you could you try to do that, but the same time. I, I could. Um, but I, I want to fight anything's like possible. When you're done. All right, so we're gonna go here and we're gonna clear out those roots. I think that's necessary. Uh, that, that one went particularly well for me. <laughs> I don't and know I guess to... we'll try to use Heat of the Revel here to remove oh, that. To to uh, or sh shoot. Because Heat of the Revel here could actually be really sweet if we uh if we hit this. Yeah, actually hit this. Insanity, good, 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 good. All right, so now um we have inflicted the insanity there. So now we need to pull uh probably you. Oh, you try hard here. No. Yeah, we'll go here. And then have our halberd deer come through here and remove that. And then I suppose we're going to just go ahead and try to do a, a full attack with the arbalest into there. Yeah, you know, we got a graze, but that's still some damage onto that slither hatchling. Um, and then I think we're pr probably going to go ahead and pull you onto this with our halberd deer. Yeah, that looks okay. I hope you're out of mana. Those are not cheap, are they? Or casting points, rather. And... Oh, no. Is this gonna be... Yeah, how much are they again? 90. So this is 90. So that's enough to potentially open up our Steel Shaper. Yeah, not bad at all. Um... But I don't think this is enough healing to justify that as an option for this the steel shapers action here honestly i think if we're gonna if we're gonna use this as a petrify into this uh this spot right here then i think we're gonna need i think we're gonna need healing from something else which means i think we need to heal with our our uh second hero here so yeah let's do that stunned for one on everybody yeah, I think that a killing vines would be a good source of rising fury for a 
um... You got it on all four of them? And... Well, I did hit all of your guys with three sender defense first, so their status resistance is very low. That was like a 90% oh, plus really on all of those. No, Sundered, yeah, unlike nice. unlike Bolstered, Sundered, for whatever reason, also gives you, uh, like, lowered status resistance. I, I'm not sure why that is, but it's been the way for a while. Oh, you're saying Bolstered doesn't boost? Bolstered does not bo boost your defense, no. Uh, your status defense, no. Just, just Sundering, uh, and it only lowers it. So he, Ninju does here have access to a restore, so he is going to restore his Spellbreaker, and his Spellbreaker is going to be able to do a lot of damage. There's kind of, like, no way around that, unfortunately. Um, so I think what we're going to do is just assume that he's, he's going to be successful on that front, and then use our, our Steel Shaper to just keep the this this little pierce here alive because if we can keep these guys alive and, and active next turn um then the dragon is going to be able to do a lot of damage we should be able we should be able to get some really insane amounts of strength and stacks here uh by casting steel fury chant next turn yeah it we'll see we'll see this, this probably is going to be a long fight, um, and so if we only have time for one fight, then that's that's the way it is. Yeah. I I don't have anything planned immediately right now, um, and Eileen is still asleep, but we are going to uh, supper with somebody, like one of our coworkers, I, if I remember correctly. But that's that's in many hours. Yeah. So that Slither Hatchling is just going to obliterate the Anvil Guard, even with all of that. That uh, defense on on the Anvil Guard in question, it still doesn't really matter. The damage output here is just super duper high, but that's okay. Trading one turn for one turn there, I think, was probably worth it for us, uh, given that we have we have an opportunity here to really push it. Um, if we can if we can like eliminate this entwine, these couple of uh, entwined thralls on this side, because this this Lightbringer currently doesn't have its dominate, that's on cooldown. The uh, Druid of the Cycle is currently stunned and we're standing right next to it with our, our dragon. So if he doesn't do something to disable the dragon, the, disa the dragon is gonna disable the, uh, the druid in very short order here, because um, we, can, we can even strengthen that thing further before, before tearing that thing apart. I think his best bet might be to use Spellbreaker, but that's, Star Purge isn't gonna, isn't gonna remove the, the stuns there, and he doesn't have the restore on his secondary hero, just his main. So if we can if we can peel that druid, then I feel pretty good. Um, that might be that might be all we need in order to to yeah, wrap yeah, this up. Sure. We could we can just demolish that thing with our our uh, beefy boy into the the iron golem, but I do think the druid of the cycle is the more dangerous long term threat. Yeah. Alchemy is pretty nice. Yeah. I like the soul one a lot. And in this format, you don't need souls, so it's like the, I think that there's extra value in that one because it requires that special resource. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, because we don't have a a um, sprint, we can't use the rallying blessing on these guys in the same turn right here right one two three four yeah only target there and hit one steel shaper that's not that's not good value out of a out of a, a fleet-footed hero we'll we'll find something else for you to do right if you brought your guys together and um war shaman them that would have been that would be good because then they would have been able to engage around each other and take out my guys my guys were just able to <laughs> the the taunt onto that iron golem did literally nothing. That was that was one of those AI double stunning uh, events. He's going he's going for the transmuter. So if he can take that out, he'll balance the morale um, that we're gonna get from killing his uh, druid of the cycle, which is which is annoying. But if that happens, it happens. Like the transmuter got the AOE stun off, which was like the big thing that you that we needed to get. Uh, and it looks like it's gonna be triggering. 
that this uh, Bastion is actually probably going to be able to trigger double um, slipaways here if we get an opportunity to, which I don't, I don't hate. That's not, that is not bad. But yeah, the transmuter did its job. It, it gave us an opportunity to do this, which is all we were really looking for. Yeah, he got the he got the transmuter. So now the question is, can how does this uh this core fight around this dragon resolve? Can one beefy boy fight against a giant army? True question. Okay, so he's got sundered uh, resistance and electrifying coming through, but. That's not that's not gonna chew through our dragon. It'll chew through the friends, but not the dragon. So what was the twenty four points that you spent? Oh you haven't even ended your turn yet. Still got a guy. So we do still have a Steel Fury chant. We do also have another melt armor if we feel like that's uh, the right thing. Let's this, see. Okay, so the beefy boy. Right now we're at one bolstered defense. So in order for us to do even more damage here um, with any sort of rally effect, we are going to need... Oh, yes, you have the bolstered defense. You have the bolstered defense. All right, good. So here, uh, bolster defense goes into our dragon, um, and then whether or not we want to activate it with uh, strength from steel, I guess we'll see. But that is certainly an option. Uh, here's a retaliation attack in there, but we do have, oh yeah, the storm spirit is going to be messed up. Um, we should probably just go ahead and hit that. Yeah, the storm spirit really only has one place to go. The, the vines only last for one turn, so they're not, like, oh. an indefinite... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, the benefit is... It's just one turn of action economy. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And, and they're everywhere, too, so if you're facing... It, okay, so here, we can get a 90% shot on that, uh... On that skirmisher from the back. Yep, removes three star blades. That's good. The star blades are the thing that are, like, doing outrageous amounts of damage for him. Um, and here, pretty obviously, this halberdier is just, like, out of position and just can't do anything this turn no matter what we do. Um, so I'm okay just moving him forward and defending. And now we need to figure out how we're going to resolve this, this Spellbreaker and, uh, the Druid of the Cycle here. Because those, those are the, the core pieces, the big, big core pieces over there that we can't, that we can't ignore forever. Um, we do have Rally and Two Regeneration that we can drop in off of the, the Scald instead of a... 90% shot. So we could just try to remove the, the thrall just to remove the thrall. Or we could drop in a bunch of healing on a, a pretty reasonable number of units. I think that's probably better, honestly. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pull the Amble Guard away. Um, that'll cause an, a retaliation attack off of the Iron Golem. Um, which is a little annoying, but not the end of the universe here. Because we can do... Actually, a buff here that could be pretty solid. Um, At least you denied him the two turns of just is that is that where we want all these guys? Is that where we want all these guys? No, I don't know about that, actually, Walker. Look, I think what we want here is we do want to maximize this value this turn. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go like this and like this. At least to a degree. And like this. now all these guys have regeneration on them and it's specifically regeneration two so that's going to be a lot of extra durability um for those units assuming they don't just get shredded by poison and even if they do just get shredded by poison that's not like the end of the world um you've already moved so we could potentially use you to clear this or we could just try to do a seduction here on um on the beacon like bring her oh right it's control loss immune uh so who actually can we control loss immune tag 
who can we control us? Who, who out here would like to come and join us? Would, uh, would your hero like to come and join us? Your hero might like to come and join us, but currently is not within range. Is it gonna be? Is it gonna be there? I don't know what I would target, but I really like the idea of stealing a slither. Just they're like my favorite unit. It's it's a it's a pretty good one. I can I can do a little bit more to juice this here though. So what we're gonna do is we are again, again gonna melt armor into this into this group. Um, that's gonna shred the status resistance in that group once more, which is gonna give our our seduce here on the uh, the star the spell break, breaker a 71% chance. All right, all right, buddy, do it. Yes. Okay, so with the spellbreaker now under our control, um, things are about to get pretty bad. I never see melt armor and I'm like, why? This is actually pretty interesting. It's good. It does, I mean, like, I think in this specific case, like obviously it has some downsides in that um, our transform our, our transmuter just like died in one round of attacks, but at least it got the summon off or the uh it got it got the spooky boy power off. Um mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll just we'll trigger the slip away. I'm fine with that. Um any anything that we can do to remove mod remove units at this point I think is probably good value. Uh and that could involve just diving on the Bastion, actually. Yeah, that could involve just diving on or on the um, the Lightbringer there. And this Anvil Guard will go here to remove that Slip Away Boy. Um, you move here to activate the Slip Away. Oh, that was already slipped away. All right, good. Well, even better. And I guess, do we want to just just take the bolstered strength here, or do we just kill the the iron golem here? Actually, I think we might just take this as an opportunity to just re delete the iron golem. Yeah, Water. boom. I don't know, but it feels like him right now. I, I guess it is also his turn, so. It is. Yeah, change. that's the thing. Is that like it? There's such huge swings back and forth from turn to turn. Like that was undeniably a pretty good turn for me, um, but now he gets an opportunity to counterattack, and that could be that could be a big problem. No, I think I think that right there that was massive. The That's it felt like it. I got to remove most of his stuff in one turn, so that was pretty good. Yes, wait three turns on this map, on this map, <laughs> for sure. I, you still haven't activated my trap card, didn't you? I, did you did you read my dragon? Uh, no. I I I brought a ring of regeneration, so I was hoping that you would just attack it and then and do some damage and then and then not kill it uh, no, and then do that over and over again. Buddy, that thing has 11 armor and 15 resistance. I'm not yeah, you can attack it. I've got That's fine. <laughs> See, what you do is you just freeze it or stun it and leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, this this army composition was actually like, I, I was looking over it, I'm like, hmm, you know, if I run into somebody with a uh, Tome of Cryomancy and they really want to do a lot of stuns, I am in trouble. Because the only thing that I, I knew I was going to bring that could do a, uh, a status clear was, like, one restore on my my second hero. Um, and a one extra restore does really nothing if your opponent has double storm, uh, snow spirits and uh, flash freeze. And your army is just going to watch the enemy kill them. Alright, so can Ninju kill uh, Gunilda the fleet-footed here? We, I did not put a shield on Gunilda, which I do sometimes I debate whether or not it's... 
worth uh, worth yeah. worth worrying about because the lance really is a lot in terms of extra damage here, but the shield would have also been pretty good in terms of survivability. But now all he's trying to do probably is like lock down the spellbreaker and make it so that we can't use the uh, the star purge ourselves. But like if that is where um, where Ninju is in terms of his combat, then I think we're gonna be that that we're, we should be able to win this pretty cleanly from here because we just deleted his tier three front line in literally one turn with with our 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 dragon killed that that iron golem in, in literally one round of attacks from effectively full HP. Astral dragon does a lot against uh, Iron Golem, especially if you have lightning weapons also. Was there other parts of your build that countered what Ninja you had here? Um, not exactly. Like, it was sort of up and down, because I also have uh, Steel Skin, which is, like, good against all of his sources of Blight damage, but very bad against Mystic. Um, so... That's sort of like a mixed bag. And then I have a lot of healing, but Ninju also has a lot of decaying. So that's actually like, I think a point in Ninju's favor. I think the issue with with this is that I, I did just get like a really good uh, wand of blizzards off at the very beginning of the fight. Like that 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 is a, I, I think wand of blizzards is a great tier two, especially if you can do strength in five and fortune three on your, your hero before you do it. You do, you do a lot of damage then. So Ninju is trying to fight back using uh, his Mighty Meek, which is going to be adding a lot of extra spirit damage whenever these units attack any of our heroes. Um, and that is that is very dangerous and definitely gives him some opportunities here to, to mess us up. Unfortunately, we can't really block the Lightbringer from being able to convert because this is going to be a, um, a one action. And so even if, we, if there's one Lightbringer left, it'll be able to break away and throw a convert at us no matter what we do. Uh, but if we can, if we can just like keep putting somebody next to it over and over again and reducing the number of models here, uh, we can kill that in a pretty quick hurry, I think. Let's, let's see how this goes. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, Soother is going to heal. That makes absolute sense. Um, Magic Bolts is not going to do a lot onto this board. These guys are just way too durable. And this is the story of Industrious. Just way too durable. Way, way, way too durable. 51 damage right now, and this is not with a max strengthen stack, so we're actually going to get three more strengthen next turn. Yeah, Tomo Construct is really good. Here, here, I think part of what uh, contributed to our, our victory, which, you know, knock on wood, like... Ninju has not finished his his turns yet, um, and so we I don't think we can count this as a victory just yet. But we are definitely ahead. Um, but here, I think part of what really helped was just like the front line. Like you can see at the very beginning of the fight, Ninju had absolutely nobody with uh, any shield wall, and having no one with shield wall is a big problem. What does the combat log say? What do what do your elf eyes see? Okay, so what happened, I think, is that you attacked my guy, but my guy has uh, enough counter attack that he killed you with a counter, um, yeah, and then that. I saw the slither hatchling appear in his new location. Before. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the actually our our big uh, frost AOE is going to be available next turn if we can clear the slither hatchling out of the way. So we might even do that because um, I wouldn't hate dropping another another big blast there. It would take a lot. Yeah, he has his tier four, and if if he can get into a position where he can resurrect with it, then actually I think he could be able to pull things back. Um, but I th right now, unless he has something that can prevent my dragon from just bullying the tier four, 
then the, the tier 4 is just not going to be outside of zone of control with reactions for the remainder of the fight. So here, I don't think that we can... Well, actually, I'm not sure. Otto is is so dangerous to do here. Like, the, the insanity that Otto can can go into is pretty out, out the, uh, the wazoo. Oh, yeah, he does, he does have double dark ritual, actually. Nah, I've been waiting for... Yeah. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Unfortunate. I had to, yeah, because I'm, I'm not seeing those here. They had no idea. Yeah, he, he had double dark ritual the entire time, but it, it was tough because he didn't have, like, perfect perfect opportunities for it. Um, here? Yeah, actually, I think the way you guys slipped away kept them from dying in an area. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, they, I got some bad slip aways on them. I think this is I think this is good. So how much damage can we do if we flank with our anvil guard? This anvil guard could do a lot more if we actually just healed it actually. Um bolster defense, we only have one on here, so we don't have like a lot of ways to heal them right now. But that's one turn on Song of Carnage. Do we even want Or I should have Maybe we just try to kill this uh, this this slither here with a scald and a uh, an anvil guard because it's a Did he go first? Uh, so I I was attacking, um, and I I got the first kill. I think it was mostly just the surprise elemental damage against the uh, the Lightbringer. But yeah, I think I think if we can take those guys out, um, that will that will make yeah, this uh, this area yeah, just a lot easier for the spellbreaker to goof around on. If we if we can get the uh, the the fire off, if we can't, then the dragon just has to keep bullying the druid of the cycle. I'm I'm okay with that too. The fact that it's sitting here at minus two defense uh, means it's it's gonna get a lot of extra damage from our our dragon. If I still had the spellbreaker, I could pull this back maybe. But... Yeah. Next time though, I'll have to do a lightbringer build where I actually bring like. Uh... I will say that these Lightbringers were amazingly durable. I, I, like, I'm used to just opening up their panel and saying, all right, the, so kids at home, the reason you don't bring Lightbringers is because they have 55 hit points, but these have 87. Like, how do, I have no idea how they have 87 HP, but whatever. Like, that's, that was a cool surprise. Oh, 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 it's from the, from the leader, from the hero. You have, do you have plus 10 from something else? Do you have the elemental so skill? I've got endurance training, I've got endurance training for plus 10, I've got a plus training skill for plus 1 plus 1, but I've also got astral enchanter for another plus 10, so that's plus 1. Ah, uh, it's astral enchanter, yeah, that's cool, that's, that's cool. That no, that, that, that's, that's just a, that's a hero specialization. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. I mean, the one bright side is that if you kill the the spellbreaker here while it's under my control, it, you do gain the morale for it, and I lose the morale because it's my unit right now. Um, yeah, I should have done that before I cast uh, Dark Ritual, though, because I could have gotten yeah. zombie out of it. But... Yeah, I think that was that was probably his best bet there. Did was, did what I, he? I did that just as an experiment. I wanted to see why it wasn't giving me any damage. I wish it had just given me the damage panel for my guy. That would have been nice. But... 
All right, so our zombie shot here, I don't think is like super yeah. duper important, but I want to I want to see if we can kill that. Um, I'm gonna see if we can kill this this stupid slither here. Yeah, oh, let's get let's get this one out of the way. Okay, so that's good. Um, and then hit this twice. Yes, it spawns back over there. That's okay. Um, and our halberd deers, I guess, are gonna drop in on you. Where, where is our bastion going? Our bastion, I suppose, is gonna go over to this. Yeah, it's just gonna go over to this. Smash, smash. Um, can you kill? Can you kill that? That slither. Oh, great. Great steel shaper, can you do that? You can do that. All right, cool. Yeah, kill that. Get out of here. Who's who's that trying to be bad? Who is that trying to be bad? Yo, mama. Everybody rock the house. Um. All right. So I guess what we're gonna do is we are gonna just like get that hero uh, beefy and uh, strengthened. And then do the same thing. Just chunk them. Boom! Wait, you got that thing back on cooldown? <laughs> yeah, it was the first thing I did with that. It was, it was like really the first action that I did basically in the game was uh, blast that thing. That silly zombie. That one is so strong, it's all buff and stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's good if you put five strengthened on it. It's really bad if you're just trying to use it for just pure damage, um, like on its own. But if you if you buff it, then the damage will come. And one beefy boy is just gonna just go in here, like because we were able to end in defense mode. I don't really care about the fact that we're potentially getting flanked there. That does not bother me. That does not bother me. The blues don't bother me. Um, and I guess we're gonna go ahead and do taunt on the zombie with this anvil guard here, so that way our halberdiers can just work on working them down. I think realistically, zombies or uh, ninja is probably gonna try to convert. Oh. No, Ninju is not going to be able to convert because the. It... Yeah. I don't know if that's enough to kill though, actually. Right now, right. Who's going to get flanked? Your dragon. No. Is my dragon going to get flanked? I am in defense mode. <laughs> oh, are you defensive masters? I am defensive masters. My dragon has zero dragon skills. It's oops all warfare. Apparently, it's like. I do think if you distract, though, that does bypass um, all around awareness and the defense mode. That might be correct. Because the watcher has a different tag than all around awareness, and he he cannot be distracted. It specifically says watcher cannot yeah. be distracted. I think you get that also if you have the um like the hyper awareness on the dragon from the double vision thing, don't you? I thought so. I think I remember testing it and being like, wait, what? No, this isn't actually like that. It's more like the uh, the all around awareness that other things get. Interesting. But like the, the watcher I think is like the one unit that actually That is actually like, cannot be flanked. Distraction. It's been a while since I tested it, but I, I may have done it. So you, you, here, Gosh, you can see that this dragon <laughs> is not is not immortal. Despite the fact that we've done like a bunch of extra uh, buffing here, because these slither hatching hatchlings have access to Mighty Meek, they are gonna be able to do outrageous amounts of damage. Now fortunately, um, it's gonna be almost exclusively 
this is really interesting, actually. Like, looking around at the rest of Ninju's stuff, who does the most damage against this dragon by by an enormous margin? It's the Slithers. It's just because of the Mighty Meek, but, like, they, they are actually doing real work here. Okay, how does this damage reduction? Damage reduction says 75% on life. That means that I'm doing 25% of the damage by walking straight to the side of the way, right? Oh, okay. I, I, I'm i taking these actions no matter what, so I'm going to do this first, and then I'll find out. Because then it won't take me to find out. Okay, so the we'll dragon that. is beaten up here. Uh, it's down to 38 HP, so it, does he have enough to kill with all of the rest of his stuff? I think he I think he can. I think he can kill it with literally all the rest of his stuff, but if he puts everything into killing this dragon this turn... Um, That's the name of my video. That yeah. <laughs> Test it out. 360 views. I think it's a pretty nice public service but it did not perform <laughs> I don't know are you yeah I think I think he's gonna be able to kill the dragon here but that that is okay because we only have 10 casting points left and like the control of the board so trading the the dragon there for finalizing this I think is probably worth it uh, especially because although he does he does still have the druid left so like it's not like it's not like this is entirely over he can bring things back from the brink but if he doesn't kill this dragon here, then that is that is a catastrophe for him. So yeah, he's gonna he's gonna have to commit everybody. Yep, there it is. There's the dragon. But we traded essentially a time walk there, so that was that was pretty good. And then our skull can. Yeah, he did it. It, it was essentially a time walk, so it, like, skipped your turn, but I think that was probably still necessary for you to do. Because if you just didn't kill the dragon, like, th that turn, yeah, how do you win? How long is this decaying going? One more turn for that decaying. Uh, yeah, I think it's next turn. It can convert again. Aww, so sad. I do still have this druid, actually. Yeah, he still has the druid, so there's a non-zero chance that he can get a good a good res off. You should resurrect somebody who can convert and then <laughs> steal actions. So what we're gonna need to do here is pick off one of these slithers. Who is our best Slither to pick off? This is probably this one. Yeah, it's probably this one. Yeah. So you're taking that hit, and then... Um, is, this, is this worth trying to roll through the Immobilize? I guess it is. Yep, so that will trigger that, and then there they go over there. And now we can kill them, hopefully with. Yeah, I guess it'll be with the uh, the scald here. Who is it gonna let you? And then we're gonna want to kill this guy with the anvil guard. Yeah. Okay. And then I think we're going to go here. So we're going to smash this. Can we kill with this Steel Shaper is the question. Because if we can kill with this Steel Shaper and then sneak the other guy through, the Halberdier through, um, that would be pretty good. But I don't think we have the, the actions necessary for that, so I think we are just gonna have to fight them the old-fashioned way, take out their 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 uh, mages, and then he'll get an opportunity to bring the mage back with with um with restart the cycle. Unfortunately, uh, unless we can stand on it, unless we can stand on it. If you can stand on it, or just leave it alive, that could also be that could also be a way to do it. Stand on it or leave it alive. 
you're not going to kill from here. Um, hmm. Actually. Is that... Is that where we need to go? I don't think that's where we need to go. I think I think this is fine. Shred the shred the the slithers. Get them out of the, the field. For the Lightbringer? Yeah. Is it worth it to just do a full round of attacks into a decaying zombie like that? I don't think so. There's got to be more important things for us to, to fight out here, Walker. Yeah, go over here. Go try to take down our, our uh, friends and... Oh, shit. Ah oh, man, I, I was supposed to move that guy around, uh, but did not did not path that correctly. Thanks for giving my lightbringer twelve more health. I mean, your lightbringer was gonna be either dead or not dead, um, and I I think here because you had access to the druid resurrection, um, happy just offering it to you. And this Steel Shaper, I think, is just going to go ahead and do Defense Mode Warding to throw a little bit of extra uh, status resistance on these guys. Yeah, yeah, this is good for you. Is it? He's got the resurrection there anyway. Well, here's the thing. You gotta get him to use it. He's got a second. He's got a second. But they're going to be they're gonna be clumped together in a pretty easy uh, AoE exploitation opportunity. Never underestimate. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we will see. Oh, I don't get my 50%. Yeah, okay. How are you rolling a 50% on that? I have, I have seven status resistance. I want, I want to see your numbers. I want to see your numbers. I, <laughs> I mean, Wait, I have five. Uh, you got it. Combat history. No, I did not. Yeah. See so yeah, at 53. How was that 53? I guess it, it's only 47% status resistance, so it's only applying that uh, yeah 52 against the 90, so that makes sense. But that should still be like less than half remaining rather than more than half remaining. Uh, is there a way to give a leader charge resistance? Yes. If you have a pole arm, then you have um, then you have charge resistance naturally. Uh, I think that's the only way that I know of right now that can give you pull, um, charge resistance. But if you do that, like it can it can be good. You just want to make sure that if you're doing that, that you also have access to um, uh, like a, uh, athletics or haste or like fast boots or something like that. Because obviously you're not going to have access to a, a mount, um, but that's still pretty good. Okay. It's still pretty good. All right, so these vines should go away at the end of this turn. Yeah, besides pull arms, I don't think so. I, I, they, it used to be that you got charge resistance from um, Kaya's transformation, but be, because they, you know, reworked all of the charge units and all that stuff to be like a lot more interesting, uh, they didn't want to just leave that as is. So that has been that has been jiggered into a, a different direction. Um, actually, this is this is I think not good for for ninju here because this this steel shaper can finish that uh uh so parting vines or uh, yeah parting parting gifts and living vines don't interact favorably anymore uh they made it so that now all summons don't trigger on deaths which is which is like good uh because it now the shadow pick isn't as grotesquely overpowered it's still really good but not as not as unnecessarily broken Okay, so yeah, we will go here. Guess I'm gonna chuck bolster defense on somebody. Yeah, whatever. We'll throw it on our other steel shaper. Does not matter. Um, and then our 90% we take here. That's good. We will take... 
don't have a taunt that we can apply to um, Saranda the Grand here, but that's okay. I don't think it matters. We'll hit, we'll hit. Do we have enough ranged pieces to just take the guy off the board entirely here? Maybe actually. I, we do have some we do have some good range pieces available because we did manage to keep our scald alive. So the scald won't be able to inflict um, the same sort of insanity that it's used to inflicting, which is which is a downside. Can we kill this? Can we kill this? Because if we can't kill this, then this is like m meaningfully no bueno. Uh, oh boy! And there's also a, a forty percent chance to to mind control uh, Ninju's druid of the cycle here. That could be pretty hilarious. Oh my god! And we could apply sunder defense first. So that's a way to increase our our chance on it. All right, you know what? Let's let's try to let's try to remove those. We got that. Sixty-five. Oh no! We only grazed. Oh, looks like it wasn't enough. Yeah, just just barely short. Just barely short. Can we actually can we mind control from here? Because this could this could be a, a mind control option here. So we mind control this uh, this support unit to turn around and shoot his Lightbringer. Um, yeah, I don't hate that actually. See, that applied double yeah, sunder defense. So we're not, yeah, we're not going to be able to, to kill this thing this turn. We're just going to get really, really close, which is, which is definitely a lot worse. Hey, you know, we're, we're doing stuff to reduce enemy status resistance, so we are putting in the homework. Tome of Enchantment is good. It's a really good tome. It's not as powerful as some of, like, I don't think it's as good as Tome of Cryomancy most of the time, but, like, it, it does a lot of stuff. Your Seduce was a 50% chance, too. This is insulting. I know. Yeah, that, that one was all luck. That one was 100% luck. Uh, just 50, the, 50, no, the tier three was was almost ninety percent because I had shredded minus five status defense, so it was actually a negative status. Uh, I think it was like a, a seventy nine or a, an eighty one or something like that. Oh. Is there anything telling me how many retaliations a unit has, so I can make sure before I do something stupid? That this yeah, the uh, the swords that are over yeah. its head, under, oh, okay. it under the, the or under the the the, the shield or whatever. Yeah, so this this uh this bastion is currently threatening the Lightbringer's ability to actually use the ability. Um, it can try to use the convert here, but if it fails the roll, uh, the retaliation will kill it. So, I think his probably his best bet is to try to dominate the halberdier here, but he'll only get one turn of attacks off, and because the halberdier is like over here, it's he could he could try to do that too. Um, like trying to mind control something over there could be a big problem. Yeah, he's got to he's got to take a convert. Well, I can't. Oh wait. Oh, that's it's not denied by zone of control. That is the one upside for for Lightbringers is that their mind control is not ZOC blocked. Okay. What you do is you take his healer and then you heal yourself. Yeah, you take the healer, heal yourself, and then and then uh, all your and then all your units just come back from the dead and and everything is fine. All right, so let's see how how Ninju closes this out. Simply because we do have access to like a, an actual.
actual melee hero, I think we'll probably be okay. Yeah. Oh man, that would have been that would have been really <laughs> sick. Yeah, seriously. That I think there's actually like an idea there, Ninju. To be honest, I would probably think about I don't know like obviously you need more frontline survivability um, and probably more ways to shred status resistance, but I think that that has, that actually is interesting enough that. Now I'm gonna think about ways to, to do that. Convert sacrifice. Convert sacrifice. I like that's something that that you do in in some blocks in Magic the Gathering, because um, they have like the the uh, act of treason effects that just take control of your opponent's unit for one turn, and that's those are generally not very good unless you pair them with things that also let you do sacrifice. But then they're pretty they're pretty monstrous. Okay, so now now it really is over, I think, for, for Ninju. Yeah, if we don't have time today, then we don't have time today. I mean, I have time, but I thought you guys wanted to fight. So the real question for me is, does Maya have time? For the match against Walker? Uh, oh, actually, do we have... Okay. Oh, I forgot which way. No, wait a second. Like, We're, yeah, we yeah, we want to do this way. Wait. Yeah. It is. It is almost three o'clock already. So. Yeah. So, if you want to. someone or am I? Uh, I'm. I'm up for doing that. But if you don't want to, I, it's like totally fine. I can find other things to do with my I mean, like right now, Eileen is still asleep, so I probably could get away with doing something. Probably. <laughs> Just be like a, a, a not timer timer in the back. Yeah. Uh, I guess here. Uh, just walk yeah, I'm gonna go that. this guy yeah. here, yeah, and I think what we're gonna do is do like right now my wife is is still asleep. Um, we have like supper plans, but that's not for another couple of hours. So I'm, uh, I I might be free. That's yeah. <laughs> nah, play I, 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 I I have a crush on her. <laughs> Don't tell. I'm gonna put you into a locker. Shut up. Alright, so let's do this. Let's do a little bit of damage with these pull arms. Um, and I guess, I you know what? I don't think it matters. I don't think this Anvil Guard is going to make a big difference on this fight either way. There we go. Dispelled two effects block decaying healing. Oh, I love, I love Steel Shapers. Yeah. Quickly. I'm not even using Tome of Warding here, but like they they can be really absurd there. You didn't kill me? What what are you doing, buddy? I I killed one of your heroes, but like I don't I don't have the ability. I can't cast my my uh my Steel Fury chant. My dragon's dead. I mean, you, you you kill me. You kill me. How about that? I think the morale's <laughs> gonna. No, his morale is fine. His oh, no. druid is at, is not running away. Like this is this is this is okay. Everything's fine. The druid will be the last to go. Uh, nah. I don't know. All right. Execute me. As you wish. Alright, there we go. 
let's let's see how that how that battle ended up. Yeah, so our we lost our ruler and our tier four in that fight, and then a little bit of our, our chaff. But the core of that, I really was, I really do think, was the power of Gwenilda. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. So, uh, actually, Winslet, if you and Ninji want to fight, then um, if if you have time, if you guys just want to fight each other, and then I and then I do commentary, then if Eileen wakes up and needs me, then I can just dip. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, this is this is I love doing these these little skirmishes. I think they're I think they're really interesting. Age of Wonders tactical combat is the best tactical combat in the series. I think four is the worst between three DM and four. So yeah, these skirmishes are great. Yeah, I, I, I think they did a, a great job with allowing multiplayer unlike some of the 4x do you hear that millennia doesn't have um like a, a multiplayer online what really yeah at all they uh, they have like you have to do cloud uh hot seating that is wild it's so I'm strange about forex as well. i'm saying you compare this you compare it to wonders to like XCOM or whatever this is better yeah All right, Wednesday, you, you uh, checking a code in? Uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, I guess I don't need to pick my leader. I just have uh, to do host private. That's my code. Oh, it's, oh, I forgot. I need to abort session because I only put two in here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's get you selected. Go to three. I'll have a good rest of your day. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for dropping by, Maya. We'll, we'll probably next week i mean every saturday we're gonna be doing skirmishes um but next week i'm gonna be doing probably some more like single player stuff um but we'll we'll line up a, a skirmish fight at some point and i we'll see we'll probably get towards uh some interesting things with with a tournament here hopefully yeah i agree kids and i think the that humankind has great combat i i actually played a little bit of uh of humankind over the past couple of days and and i think that we could definitely get some some more humankind content out if we really really wanted to but i, I want to get i want to get some more age of wonders wonders for things down on the books uh first but yeah, i'll be wait a second i lost my debit card a real long time ago i've been trying to find it today join so. oh nope never mind no longer an embarrassment congrats all right you find one slayer I think oh, so. Oh yeah, let me know whenever you've joined, so I'll, I'll pop the quote the code in. And decide if I'm actually using this thing. I should have thought about this earlier. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think humankind is. is it, I know that that potato McWhiskey had like a a problem with it recently, and I will I will say that I think the meat, like the map RMG is a a little problem. But yeah, I am a big fan of Amplitude games. I think that overall, Humankind is is actually pretty good. Um, and definitely, for me at least, I think it was a, a more complete game than than Civilization VI at least was at, at release. It's gotten a lot better, but uh, Humankind does still have some issues with like AI pacing and whatever. Um, yeah, Humankind did have some issues at launch, and it still has some, but I think that like Endless Space 2 it, will... We'll do an endless space two video, um, and then like or stream and like figure out how it how it performs and if it's interesting to include more amplitude games because I have done some of them before uh, on the channel like we did a stream with the Oceania DLC whenever it dropped um, and it was really fun uh, but yeah I, I think endless space two is probably my favorite amplitude game that I've played so far um, by pretty meaningful margin. Just because the, the the soundtrack in Endless Space 2 is so unbelievably good. Um, but yeah, Civ, Civ generally, they're not great on launch. I've also debated whether or not it, we're going to go back and do um, a Dune Wars stream for Civilization 4. So Dune Wars is like a mod for Civ 4 that changes it pretty meaningfully uh, and is pretty fun. Um, but it, it definitely uses a lot of things from the uh, the Villeneuve movies if they're if they're or Villeneuve mo movies um, in terms of like assets, so it might not be monetizable, uh, but it might be something that we do for fun. Um, yeah, Civ Four was my favorite actually out of all the Civilization games that we played. 
uh, back in in the olden days. I still think that's probably my favorite Civ game. Yeah, I'm I'm actually I'm gonna take a, a little break too, but I'm readied. So whenever you guys are are ready to fight, then just go ahead and I'll I'll jump over and see where where we are. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little bio break here, everybody. I'll be right back, and hopefully by then Ninju and Winslay have started their fight. And if not, then we'll see. We'll be able to do a little bit of commentary on the way that their world evolves. Hopefully. I mean, I guess relatively speaking, it's not too bad. I'm in, you know, sunny California, so you shouldn't complain. I can't wait for this build to fall apart and just not work at all. Ooh, I'm excited to hear that. <laughs> I love it when I see someone else's build fall apart. Yeah, no promises. It might happen.
first on how I'm gonna when I'm hitting on my tier threes. It's okay though, we'll deal with it. Oh, no, All right, so let's see what we got here. So we have Winslayer and Ninju about to fight. Uh, who is which? Winslayer is blue, Ninju is purple. So Ninju and Winslayer both have uh, no dragon. I assume that means we have Wizard King on both sides. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so Winslayer is already off to the uh, the the Cryomancy tome. Working with three snow spirits here. I'm kind of curious which direction these guys end up taking their builds in. Big astral out of Ninju. Big, big astral out of Ninju. I'm excited for you to find out what I'm doing. Yeah, this, this, I'm just, right now I'm looking at people's affinities and just trying to figure out what's going on. But you guys are, are looking interesting so far. Hey, take a look at this. It's going to tell you what I'm doing right away. Oh yeah. So he's got Astral Serpent here. So he's gonna be bringing um, the yeah Tome of Teleportation. He's he's working with the Phase Beasts and the Astral the Astral Resources of the Universe. So this is really interesting actually. He's got um, Tome of Summoning then as well. So this could be a really scary assassin here in this Phase Beast, um, especially especially if you can get the Strength and Five on this. This thing is still a, a fantastic assassin when it comes to dealing with enemy heroes. It's difficult to, to get guaranteed value out of this in Empire mode, simply because it is a little more fragile. But I think here in this universe, uh, we might we might see something really spooky. Is Winslayer going to have any sort of lightning damage here to, to help him out? Because if he's not, he's going to be in a bit of a spot of trouble, actually, I think. 
at least the one thing going well for, for Winslay so far is that Winslay does have triple snow spirits and we see already frost blades on the board. So at least there's going to be some resistance on this side. And for that matter, because Winslay is bringing double gremlins, uh, he's going to have some ways to deal fire damage back in the event that uh, Ninju opts to bring some snow spirits of his own. One thing that I, I want to do, but we haven't had the uh, the opportunity to do so far, is bring some like like re interesting the early tier two battle mage builds. See if we can make something work with that. I could try and think about making a video about that. I'm just concerned that that would be one that would get too many views. But if I do a Reddit post to build a vibe around it, um, it could be as soon as like next weekend. But I I want to I don't want to commit to that quite yet. You know. What, what commitment is there? We just need the viewer submitted builds. We need yeah. two people in the whole to, world yeah, to submit, to submit builds. builds. We we probably could do a, a Reddit post on it though. I think that probably wouldn't be a bad thing. Or we or we could like ahead of time Wednesday we could send out community posts for us, um, like on like Wednesday or Thursday, asking people to submit builds for uh, for skirmish Saturday. Yeah. I'm sure at least one person would, would post for each of us, even if they wouldn't necessarily give us something viable. Like, that might be fun if they if we show up with really silly things. Here's what I'm thinking, right? Is Okay, okay. So let's say we get six builds. Crazy number, I know. But let's say six people out there decide to submit builds. Each of us gets three builds to choose from, but then we veto one of the other players' builds. So you get a pick of two, basically. I like that. Oh, I thought this was yeah. your AI. I thought this was your AI showdown. Hey, we could do that too. That's fine. I was just thinking, have viewer submitted builds that we play with. Yeah, no, that that actually sounds pretty fair. I like that idea. But I don't think I'll... we've talked about that before. Ooh, all right. So Ninju is going with Cryomancy and Evocation, so he has Lightning and Frost damage. So if he has access to any sort of wet effect here, that could be really powerful. Um, so if if Ninju sees a summon elemental on his his units, he might want to or on his uh, his heroes, he might want to choose that. Because there, if you can get the 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 water spirit, that can be huge. Uh oh, but Ninju is is already going in on on making triple snow uh, storm spirits with triple snow spirits on the other side. Uh, storm spirits are a lot more fragile. Um, yeah, this is this is gonna be interesting, actually. Like, how many times is Ninju gonna build? Uh, right. well, reduce your units on the game. That's gonna be fantastic for you in the upcoming battle. Ooh, oh boy. The other guy. <laughs> this, this guy will do. <laughs> he has to live. Your job, live. <laughs> you looking at your uh, your heroes here? Hey, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell him, Walker what my hero does. <laughs> uh -oh. He'll, he'll never figure it out. He can't right-click on your hero and, and read the text that appears. Why don't I have Astral Keepers? Uh, Astral Keepers are a summon in combat spell. They are a tactical uh, spell. Yes. Oh. That might throw things off for you. Oh, oh, no, it's fine. That's just... That's really cool to know now. Yeah, so you, you do I have a tactical that. spell that can add that. Uh, they still are only three turns, but they can be useful. I mean, that's probably... It's, it's better in very specific phases of the game. Like, you need a lot of ta uh, combat casting for it to be really powerful, but having it as an option is, is very neat. Very neat. So, so far, in terms of, like, the elemental lineup, I think things look better for Winslaya, um, simply because he does have, like, ways to exploit the the weaknesses on um ninju's side a little better but only a little bit better and both of them have have really neglected their um their defensive tools entirely here so this is going to be like an extremely extremely hectic fight on both sides at least ninju does have uh double spell shields so he does have access to defensive tools but winslaya has like nothing that can do um shield wall over there so Win I'm Winslay is obviously going for like a high damage build. is is his goal. He's trying to just chuck everything onto the onto the the field and kill things as quickly as he can. It looks like Winslay has picked up the Staff of the Mire Crocodile as as a an option on his second hero. So that way he's got another another summon going on. That's pretty strong. 
And so far, it doesn't look like Winsight has taken any of his um, equipment packages, but he is playing with Draconian tra Transformation. So Draconian Transformation giving you the, the natural generation on all of your units. Obviously, it's not going to be as uh, big on an army where he's okay, not so using a lot of up, cultural hold units. Hold hold but up. Tier 2 stuff, Tier 2 items. Here's the thing. I started yeah. with unicorn mounts. Yes, that I doesn't count. Those, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Much, I need to pick up my stuff. Uh, it's like literally right next to his capital. Um, yeah, so it's you just put, put, don't click on his stacks. You can't you can't see what he's doing. So Ninju having access to phase actually could be a really big deal in this combat. Um, we'll we'll see. Also interesting, Ninju is, does have access to uh, Spell Warden on his extra hero. Uh, two extra stash resistance against, like, you know, a, a generic army might not be very impactful. But against an army that is trying to do a lot of statuses, and it looks like Winsley is probably going to need to do a lot of statuses, because, like, his, 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 the, these guys love using rapid evolution slip away uh, skirmishers as their front lines, and those do do a lot of damage. The, the, we saw their, the, uh, the, the two slithers were able to do more damage against our dragon than all of the rest of Ninju's oh, armies yeah, combined, yeah, um, and because they were there, they were actually able to bring down our dragon, but because uh, he invested so heavily in that offensive capability on those, on those skirmishers, the rest of his army was just like too fragile uh and we were able to to roll up elsewhere even as he was able to bring down the the beefy the beefy boy i think if we'd thrown a wind barrier ring on it obviously the dragon would have survived that round of attacks but then you start entering into the realm of like well if it had the wind barrier ring would he have dealt more chip damage to it over the course of combat maybe maybe To have what? There, but they're, um, yeah, tier one. Is there two? Yeah, tier, tier one, one handed weapon. There uh, one. yeah, the, just the you just generically, if you just unequip your weapon, yeah, then yeah, you just I'm have your. That. That, that oh, is no, the primary one. Okay. Yeah, Wizard Kings have the Gaudier Swords, so they have, like, spirit damage on theirs. Um, but yeah, all the tier one weapons are just, like, Tier one weapons. Oh no, I'm absolutely not putting my leader into me. Like I'm looking at the hero. Uh, you know what? Let me take a look at the tier two weapons. Are. Maybe I will take those if I'm going to use that unit this time. Tier two weapons give you access to a couple of interesting stabs, as well as like the satirical orb, um, and I guess the arc fire orb, and then uh, lightning sword and noble aegis and. Uh, you you can crossbow too if you want to do a lot of damage that way. Oh my god, this noble ages is incredible. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm taking. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. this is gonna go great for me. <laughs> for one turn. Why is there only one tier one armor? Can I at least have that twice? Yep. Oh, so Void Talon, you're saying you have uh, desyncs and classic turns with two player? Yeah, that, uh, like, Wait, it's tough. Tier, tier we, we've been encountering... The only tier one armor that exists in the game um, without the randomly rolled stuff is leather armor. It's like literally the only one in the item file. Thanks for reminding me to double check that so I can just switch to tier two. Tier. Yeah, because tier two armor gives you weapons to get to the noble ages or no? Am 
Tier 2 weapons is Noble Aegis. We should probably talk to Badok about, like, item packaging to make sure that it all makes sense, because it does seem like there's a, a problem with miscellaneous at the very least. But yeah, these things, I, I don't know, like, I feel like hopefully we can keep getting attention drawn to multiplayer um, through myself and, and through Winslaya, but the fact of the matter is that, like, multiplayer is a smaller part of the overall, like, 4X community by such a huge margin that, like, I don't even necessarily think that it's wrong from a business perspective that, that uh, the Triumph isn't putting more more resources into multiplayer. Because, like, they are a business. Like, they, they need to go where the customers are. And unfortunately, the customers are mostly not in multiplayer right now. But I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, the more that we can show off stuff like this, uh, the better. Before I finish my, like, yeah, I think I think as long as people aren't doing it to like an absurd and excessive degree, then I think that's fair. Like if you wanted to see that your opponent has a bunch of ranged pieces and then have um, you know, wind barrier ring, I think that's probably okay. As long as as long as you're f following like normal building rules, I think that's fine. Just I would also encourage people not to pre not to like wait too too much. Yeah, I think part of it, Void Talon, is that Forexes are long form, therefore it's uncommon to get full games. But I think the other thing is that, like, the the kind of the gaming experience that people are looking for is probably different. Because, like, if you're looking for, uh, you know, a, a short, fast, tactical game, um, that sort of pacing, I think, generically is more fine-tuned towards multiplayer anyway. Um, but then if you're looking for a game where you know by the by its core that it's going to be long, um, that... that it's mostly going to be single player. The the Stellaris Nexus 5X, which unfortunately just like does not have uh, like a, a, a multiplayer community at all anymore. Um, they they they're actually really interesting. It's a a very fast kind of 4X game, uh, sort of like Twilight Imperium. Um, but overall overall there just aren't a lot of fast uh, 4Xs around. So, Poisonous and Hideous Stench. Yeah, you could use Poisonous and Hideous Stench together for a Swamp uh, build. That would be fine. Um, I would say that... I mean, it, it's tough, kids. Because the thing is, is that there are a lot of things that factor into, like, whether or not you're going to have a, a good multiplayer experience, right? If the multiplayer experience is bad because there are so many desyncs, de then people are not going to play it, which is definitely, a, I think, a, a meaningful part of it. But the fact of the matter is that, like, uh, I've played enough multiplayer Age of Wonders 4 to know that unless people are playing hyper, hyper, hyper competitively and, like, trying to be toxic and stuff, that those games are hours long at a minimum. And sometimes they're, like, dozens of hours long depending on how people are playing like one of our really giant seven or eight player free-for-alls we had like nine sessions for it that's like 24 hours like that's not a reasonable thing for people to ask to be committed to but there is i think yes a little bit of self-fulfilling uh prophecy aspect to it because like if there was better net code for Age of Wonders 4 and people were not suffering desync problems all of the time. I don't know how many more people would be playing on multiplayer, but I do know that there would be fewer people complaining about desyncs on, on Reddit because there are people complaining about desyncs on Reddit because there are desyncs. So like, does that create an opportunity in an environment where other people are going to want to experiment with, um, with multiplayer, if they if the the their introduction to it is people complaining about desyncs on Reddit, I don't think so. Um, and so I, I do think there is a part of self fulfilling prophecy to it, but I think that it, it's tough because like the the multiplayer communities that emerge are gonna be just as diverse in terms of the the what they're looking for in terms of a game experience as single players are like there are people who do lots of min maxing in single player um and then there are people who do lots of min maxing in multiplayer and people do role playing and both has electric damage come what oh uh does it do you keep it i'm not sure you were saying that i picked a bunch of shock stuff no no it wasn't what i was talking about um well, at the Astral, you'll kill my, my uh, Primal Crocs really quickly, if that's what I think. But it's maybe not that big of a deal. I mean, Ninju does have uh, access to lightning damage. Mm -hmm. 
So that is, that is pretty good against Primal Crocs. But yeah, it, it's tough because like the, the Triumph is not an enormous company. Um, they they were they were bought by by Paradox Interactive to the best of my knowledge in in 2017 based off of what I was able to read online. So they are part of a, a larger company and therefore should have access to those sorts of uh, the resources they need. But even in Paradox, like the net code is not always the most important thing for them because um, like, just like. But, but there is, I think, a good a good reason to counter argument, which is if you look at the people who've played multiplayer, I feel pretty confident that the people who play multiplayer probably overwhelmingly those are players who have at like at a minimum 100 hours in the game. And so you're probably interacting more with uh, the whales of uh, Age of Wonders 4 if you're looking at multiplayer stuff, um, which means you're going to be interacting with the people who are like a lot more passionate about it most of the time. But you know there there are people who have like a thousand hours of multi, mostly single player too. Um, so not to not to discount their experiences. It's just that it, it really is a very different game. When say you are just psychotic here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, like meta competitive, like, and the thing is, is that brutal viable builds are also incredibly divergent in terms of like how you approach the game, because brutal auto resolve only and brutal manual combats are like completely different in terms of their their difficulty. Brutal brutal manual combats are like probably a lot easier than some of than some of the other things that you can do with auto resolve only by a, a pretty huge margin, because like hard and brutal don't necessarily make the game harder they just shift where the difficulty is by by making the the environment uh more difficult therefore like the ai will have more difficulty actually getting resources and and get getting research and being able to present a good threat to you and so instead it's just the threat coming from like the world map and so the the things that you need to fight against the world map versus other empires are are just like pretty different yeah, well, you you can manual combat almost all early battles. I would encourage you not to. I think that that is not fun. Um, like one of the things that we do here in in the multiplayer game is we we do auto resolve only against the map, and then we do manual combats against each other. So that way we still get the the fun tactical combat. But like it, once you enter into the world where you are doing manual combats against the map, um, so you really fight, should. Fight most of the time you should just like try to identify where your gold infestations and gold wonders are and go fight those and just like that's the game and then and then you've defeated gold ancient wonders by like ter you can do it insanely insanely early um like uh turn 10 turn 9 turn 8 depending on what your map looks like I mean, it, it depends on what you're, what you're trying to get in terms of your AI, because, like, the harder the map becomes, the harder it becomes for your enemy empires, but the more advantages that you give your empires, the more it offsets those. So, like, a major advantage AI is going to have a much easier time on a, on a brutal map um, than, like, a, a major handicap AI will. And so... Uh, yeah, exactly. Like if you if you want your AI to be a little stronger, um, then you can help them cheat. And plus thirty percent damage and plus and minus thirty percent incoming damage is actually a really big deal. Yeah, Ninju Ninju likes fighting on funny maps. There sure are. Yeah, I don't think there are any any uh, 4X games with AI that I think are, like, fully competent. Um, although I haven't played the... So Master of Orion 1 got a rework, like the ROTP rework. I don't remember what that stands for, but they, they apparently have built an insanely powerful AI for that game because that game is pretty... Um, straightforward and so it's it's easier to to port the rules over to an AI um, to have like a good strategy in place 
and, and you know enormous amounts of cheating in in place um but yeah it, well the, you have to do stat cheats unfortunately in order for uh you to have a a good ai in in a 4x against a human i think most of the time um it's it's just it's difficult to to calibrate an ai otherwise because like there's always going to be people yeah i i play master of ryan 2 that's the that's the one that i that i play the most um, but Master of Ryan 1, uh, apparently they did a, a re not a remaster of that, which they did do that. That was Conquer the Stars. But, um, you know, they, they, they did like some sort of like fan, fan rework of it or something like that. And, and it has really good AI. Looks like they're just ta figuring out where they're going to fight. Yeah, same turn, spellcaster going to heal. Yeah, going to we're just going right, to day, so day three. Yeah, that's fine. So uh, we're yeah. now here on day three, and Winslay and Ninju are about to get into it. I think this one, I personally think Ninju is going to win. I think Ninju has a better combination of defensive tools than Winslay does. Winslay just doesn't have anything that, that has, like, survivability here. So, you gotta step off, buddy. Ooh, I gotta come to you. Nice. Okay, all right. That's crazy. <laughs> it's low, right? Step off. All right, I'm pressing Ruins the button. Are mine. Oh, you. Oh, you want me to step back? To yeah, you want because. Ah, uh, yes, I see what you're saying. Yes, okay, that makes sense. I misunderstood what you're saying. Stepping back. Yeah. No. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Get get your guy off the ruins. Let Ninju defend defend the ruins of the city. This is my rubble pile. You yeah. You're gonna have to come try it for my old dead hands. Oh, uh, gross. The feet on your ruler are hideous. Oh my god. Alright, manual time. I'm, I'm pressing the button. So we act, it looks like we have dragon transformation on both sides. I, oh, yes, we have draconic vitality on that side. My dad. I feel insulted. But we see Wisp Familiars on um, on Ninju's side, which means that Ninju is going to have a couple of extra units around. Now, Wisp, fam Wisp Familiars are not, like, insanely powerful units, but, you know, they, they an extra unit is an extra unit is an extra unit. Like, sometimes all you really need is, is the ability to do a little extra damage here. If he had if he had the uh, the Tome of the Dragon, then that could actually give him access to two more um, flame strikes. I I actually might consider that as an option here. Um, this map really has a start like right next to each other. Are we close? Yeah, yeah. You guys are definitely closer. One hundred percent. Yeah, that you're like almost an entire turn closer. And then there's also not like an enormous amount of stuff in be in between. Um, there's some cover, but there's not like a lot of stand-in cover. It's more like wall cover. So this 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 is I think pretty hostile to ranged stuff. I actually, uh, if I had taken a uh, phase like the special hero version of phase on my leader, I could phase forward and hit you with an AOE right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know for future reference. You could do that. If I you really would... wanted to, I could just run forward and start hitting you, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah, so the polar ruler, yeah, uh, weapon traits do apply to spells if they're in, in the same, the same like, line and, and picking them up, so you can do a lot of extra damage that way. Um, I want to do something with polar arms at some point, but right now what we're trying to talk... Uh, it's uh, Badok into doing is making a, a, an update for the mod with hopefully two big changes. We're hoping to get something like an inn introduced, sort of like how we have the item forge where you can, can get um, like packs of items. We're going to try to get a way to introduce uh, units from Ancient Wonders because I think that would be really fun. Like if you could occasionally randomly get access to uh, Spring Fairy for some of these fights, then that would be really cool. Um, I'll let you know if we if people could recruit uh, an astral keeper as a as a dark player, then that could give them more options in terms of where their build has to go. Because uh, like you just don't want to be missing out on access to supports. That's just not a not a good place to be in. That is technically a tier two unit, I believe. Yeah, it's a weird one. 
But this is this is really interesting because in some ways this is actually like bad for ranged because there's um, like just not a lot of lines for them to to hide. Uh, you're so close. But on the other hand, it is it is really good at producing uh, increased offensive value. So Winslayer, did he take amplified arrows again? It looks like he did not take Amplified Arrows again, so he's not going to have the ability to splash his stuns off of his Inquisitors. Um, that That is going to reduce their, their efficacy. And then, of course, he is going into fighting with uh, three Lesser Storm Spirits. The So the, there's a Giant Slayer trait on the ruler, but then there's also the uh, Giant Slayer trait on your weapon. Um, and depending on what sort of damage channel you're doing sometimes the damage channel from just the weapon itself not the ruler also applies to the other sorts of damage that the ruler does it i don't know if that's a bug or not but it is something that you can that you can see in combat yeah wield a pole arm and then if you have um like uh, fire evocation it you'll get the giant damage damage uh, extra bonus most of the time Yeah, I just I think I feel like Niju has has much much better defensive tools. So Winslayer just needs like a really really aggressive um, interaction. He 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 needs a, a good uh, connection before before some of his pieces get annihilated. Shattering refuge. This uh this can also be a good way to poke holes in your enemy's formation. And of course, Ninju, because he is playing with Mystic, he's going to have access to a lot more uh, casting points. So he's got not only his the powerful evokers, obviously, so he's got a bunch of casting points there. But whenever you have a Soother on the field, spells are just 20% cheaper to cast. That's mana as well as casting points. I gotta wait another turn before I can sub it in. Gonna have to learn how to deal with it. I know. Tough. Life is tough. I mean, he's, Winslay's got ways to, to do some uh, summoning out here. He's got spiritual healing. Uh, oh, right. where did this... Uh, did this get built into a every damage new, dealer? Every, like, skirmish yes. or secondary, I can click on and, like, view the uh, damage outline of along with your movement, so I don't have to play hex counting, except for your Inquisitor. That oh no! Yeah. Spell cast or something. Oh yeah, no, I know what you mean. It's really annoying for when it is your own unit too. You're like, can I? Yeah. I think I can. <laughs> so what what Ninju is trying to avoid is just the the stuns here, because of of course on Winslay's side. If he can get that that nice engagement and like get somebody isolated and stunned and stuff, then he does have the Winslet does have the the pieces necessary to kill pretty quickly. Um, let's see actually how they they position in regards to these watchtowers. I'm kind of surprised that Ninja didn't move forward a little bit more to try to take control of them, but I, I guess he's just not interested in uh, being up up here on this this lip and therefore in range of getting blasted by everybody so let's see how Winslaya closes this gap if you don't have access to um you know like haste abilities then some Maybe. big okay. big ranged strategies like this can can be pretty powerful um but i just i think i i feel like he's he doesn't have enough survivability here right i don't think he does i don't think he does we'll see Kind of, kind of depends on how this blizzard gets exploited. Minus two status resistance is pretty nice. Um, yep, helping, helping on the extra hero here. So Winslayer has access to double gremlins. Double gremlins is pretty scary into uh, Ninju's board, simply because you, Ninju again he has absolutely no charge resistance in this army, because um, these neither of these guys brought brought melee pieces, and so that means that the the gremlins are going to have a lot of things that they can that they can slap around here. I can't believe Winslay didn't bring one ancestral warden. That's just like disrespectful. Winslay, I can't believe you didn't bring one ancestral warden. That is that is that is yeah. disrespectful. Is it? <laughs> I I think so. 
You're not gonna bring your, your pointy boys. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. It's gonna be weird not You've been using primals a lot recently. <laughs> <laughs> that is also true. <laughs> Come back. Yeah, I'm just gonna probably... But because there isn't any uh, charge resistance on uh, Ninju's side, then the gremlin ability here, um, the behind you, is actually very dangerous. Uh, the ability to, to flip things around and, and break def defense mode is very strong. And these things can combine very well with these sort of ranged pieces that he's got. So Winsley is really very classy, that he's an all-alpha strike. He wants to make sure that he gets a couple of good engagements and removes some of these units from the board. But unfortunately for him, um, some of the pieces that, that Ninju is playing with are pretty good against that exact pace of playstyle. And so it'll just be up to Ninju to see if he can if he can get that good engagement first, uh, or if or if or if Winslaya can can strip some models here. Because he doesn't have a lot uh, on this side that's multi-model. One thing that I wanted to do uh, today, but because we're not going to have a fight with Maya. But uh, in the future, we'll probably do it next week. Um, I want to do I want to do Tome of Vigor, and I want to bring Super Growth and and get some uh, some scary big boys going that way. Because that that can be very powerful in in any sort of combat, um, but especially in these sort of low tier combats, having Super Growth is really really powerful. If all of your low tier units have very few models, then your damage output is going to be a lot more consistent. And of course, super growth giving you an extra uh, an extra a retaliation attack is actually pretty good. Uh, when it comes down to it, it is pretty good. A couple of super growth barbarians could uh, could put in some work, some berserkers. Looks like Winslaya is going to use at least one of his uh, Rising Fury heals on his Gremlin rather than on a, an Animist for Turbo Summoning, but I think that probably makes sense. Like Winslaya needs to respect damage output here because um, there's a lot of mobility. Access to these these phases can be pretty spooky. Although it does seem like the phasing enchantment on the uh, the the ability here is the same phase ability on on um the unicorn mount and so it's not as as helpful in this particular case but here ninju does have the secret weapon um the stunning flash off of a spell shield if you can if you can line that up with a little bit of negative stats defense uh that can be really gross you just pop your your unicorn riding spell shield into a big group of people and then go off stunning flash if you can stun four four units that way it is fantastic And because these all have like relatively uh, large number of models, the the slip away isn't as scary. It is it is pretty terrifying when there are very few models in a, a stack, but that's pretty hard to to do. I think you the really the best air quotes around best thing that you can do there maybe is take super growth, um, slip away, and peasant pikemen. I think that could be that could be something. That could be something actually. That could be something. We haven't done feudal with peasant pikemen uh, trying to become immortal in a long time, uh, and that that could definitely be interesting. Yeah, it's pretty neat, huh? I don't know if they're actually better than my inquisitors. Like, maybe if I take them some other towns, they could have been frost wyverns instead of uh, inquisitors. Well, he already has one. Yeah. I just, I, like, I think it is a, an interesting debate because of, you know, you don't get access to the uh, transformations, so that, that's like a point in the Inquisitor's favor, but the flying ability on Wyverns is really strong, and then the animal tag can be really good, depending on how much investment you have there. Like, Wyverns, Wyverns with killing momentum are pretty good. They do at least, at least the Frost one has a ranged attack. I know. I thought uh, yeah. I really did. Trust me. Ninju, I, I want to do. And wyvern. And, and a wyvern. He gets. He gets that. I want. I want somebody to do uh, like a, a combination of, of some of what you've you've brought before Ninju. And uh oh wait what what what. Oh, I want to see. I want to see Tome of Summoning with Tome of Dragons. So that way you get the Astral Wisps with the uh, the fire the fire bomb effect for free 
that makes that pick go through the roof in value, I think. That you get the one extra fire bomb. I, I it, well, you get if you get two, you get you know two astral wisps, one on each of your heroes. That's that's not nothing. It requires both of your heroes to be built into battle mages, but uh, you know you have two battle mages, battle mage heroes with two astral wisps. Like you kind of don't need infinite. Uh, battle mages outside of those. It's a lot of a lot of AOE control. And critically, it doesn't even have to be two battle mages. You could have like a mage killer as one of your uh, your other heroes instead of taking like all of the mage spell effects. You could take like resistance effects, and that's a way to unlock a lot of things in the uh, the mage tree, and then get down to um, the astral wisps. So that, that could be that could actually be something that we do in the future. I don't know. We'll 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 see. I'll think about it because that could be fun. But I'm just gonna end my turn and let Ninja kill me. <laughs> I think we'll I think we you definitely want okay. Tome of Evolution there though. Because you want to make sure that these uh these bad boys would stay alive and the Astral Wisps do get as we see here the Rapid Evolution enchantment and that is that is gonna make them a little scarier just a little bit here. But if they had Firebomb. They might be a lot a bit scarier. So where is Ninju going to go with his units? Does he have the haste necessary to actually pressure Winslaya this turn? Or is he just going to make close, try to close the distance? Fortunately, working on, on Ninju's side, Wind Barrier, 60% ch chance uh harder to hit with all of these ranged attacks and all of his units are ranged attacks but almost all of them are skirmishers so if if uh, ninju gets too close and can't remove units uh the retaliation attack could be done with with melee rather than range and i'm also really curious to see how he applies these phase beasts generally you want to save them to do stuff like trying to clown on a an enemy hero but that's an ability which is like kind of reliant on having multiple phase beasts and because of the the setup here we don't have that um so the the options are a little more limited a little more limited i think we might see the summon elemental here come out of ninju right now i think that that can't be that can't be bad for you and he does have spell breakers although he is outside of the range for uh using his spell breaker this turn unfortunately that's not a lot of damage, is it? Oh, I have um, fantastic damage. That was a good idea. Yeah, defense training and defense mode. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, and fortunately for Ninju, the and Winslaya both, their uh, their snow spirits do only have a thirty percent chance of freezing. Now, obviously, into depending on who you're shooting into, you can get higher than that if their stash resistance is negative, but it's a little tricky. Yeah, the, the, exactly. Sorry, the kids and yeah, the, the giant slayer trait does not stack with a weapon variant. It's just the same trait, um, and it just throws it on your unit. Where is where is he looking to connect actually? Because this is this is a huge deal for for him. If if uh, Ninju can get this thing to go off into any of Winslay's Magic Origin units, which Winslay has a bunch of Magic Origin units, um, it should it, he should be able to get insane amounts of value out of that spellbreaker. But he kind of needs Winslay to get close, um, and then that could get pretty dangerous because you can see that that Ninju does not have a lot of things that remove um, status debuffs. In fact, I'm not even certain he has any. And so if he gets close with, if, if Winslaya gets close with the Inquisitor and just like stun locks the Spellbreaker for a couple of turns with Inquisitors going back and forth, it looks like Ninju is afraid of that as a possibility and is moving his Spellbreakers back. So he's offering Winslaya the opportunity to keep on making, closing that distance. I think that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, like get get the opponent with the ranged tools to 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 take their first pot shots into your defensive uh, formation, and this is very defensive because of the, those ranged attacks, uh, the ranged attack problem. But once they get into melee, then the the lightning are going to get torn apart by the uh, the extra 
frost damage here. Minus, minus six frost weakness means these things die in like one round of attacks off of uh, Slithers here. Quite literally, actually. I think that might literally be one round of attacks to, to kill them there. Yeah, we'll see how, how Ninju uses this Astral Wisp, but I, I think that Astral Wisp and uh, Tome of Dragons actually does sound like an interesting combination for for um, for this format. Downside, of course, that they don't get the Draconic Transformation, so you probably want to maximize your, uh, your, your access to that with the rest of your units, but, you know, that's something that you can do. That's, that should not be too difficult. What would that look like? It would probably look like... Uh, I mean... Hmm. Yeah, if, if, let me let me look into what a mage killer can can actually do in this format before committing to that that as a build. But if you can make a mage killer that can get access to the the astral wisp and still like be a good melee um, combatant, like you might have to take the the tier two weapons and give them um, noble aegis and lightning sword. But like that's that's really good with the sort of things that we're fighting against. It is exactly the sort of equipment that can that can really do work. I think that's. Exactly what we see out of one of these guys here, isn't it? No, it looks like Winslay did not take that. And instead he took tier 2 armor, so he has Helm of the Warrior and Robe of Resistance. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. Helm of the Warrior isn't as good um, with these lower tier units, but... This this is an insanely insanely beefy unit here. Kaya the Prophet, nine defense, one hundred and forty three HP. Winslay, can you explain to me how your your second hero here has one hundred and forty three HP? Like, what did you do? Why did you do this? <laughs> oh, um, I don't. Why why spoil. why did you do this? I I see I see the equipment. I, um, I, I, I meant more of a why than anything else. <laughs> Maybe you'll see eventually. <laughs> I mean, that, that I is spooky. Why yeah. I did that. Um, you guys are going to start dealing damage to each other in, in moments, hopefully. And then, and then we're going to see the, the power of Kaya the Prophet, because she does have this natural regeneration and 143 HP. So that, that can get like a lot of extra yeah beefy but still has a staff like obviously the defense and the resistance here are not particularly high and so like the damage input on um kaya is going to be through the roof but as long as kaya doesn't die then it doesn't matter um reload yeah and movement speed 24 yes <laughs> movement speed 24 the uh i i feel like we we need to probably introduce some of the random equipment into the game somehow i'm not sure exactly how to do that in a fair way because they are, they can be really really powerful against very specific builds in ways that are kind of broken um but but the fact that there's no tier two pants that don't make you uh it's insanely slow is kind of annoying but you know if you're gonna be at 24 movement speed a staff that summons a unit is like the perfect thing i think this is exactly how you would want to use this piece of equipment um for for the purposes of this skirmish uh mod universe Wait, is this true? you get giant slayer on your spells if your ruler is wielding yeah a arm? yeah that Wait, wait it, what that's yeah hilarious. if if you're ruler, because it applies it, I, it it definitely worked last patch because it gave your uh, ruler the giant slayer trait rather than it applying just to your attack. And so because your ruler had the entire trait, it was applying to all of the damage that it was doing that was checking on your uh, your your hero's traits. It's like almost Wait. all sources of damage. Does that mean if you take Magecraft, that applies to your, the status effect ignore applies to your, uh, your spells too? Uh, you, like the, the giant slayer would apply to fire evocation, if that's what you mean. 
No, no, no. So, so let's say, so, so this is what I understand, right? If I'm holding a pull arm, then I have Giant Slayer and Cavalry Slayer, right? Yeah. So, so it's I plus forty against both. Yeah. That does forty percent more damage. No. Against fulmination. Them. Fulmination is uh, not your your he hero, not your ruler. That's so, like so we're coming. not talking about spell cast. We're talking about magical secondary abilities. Uh, okay. well, yeah, any any sort of extra damage effect off of your off of your hero, like if you have access to wand of magic missile, um, okay, okay, okay. if that's, you have draining blade. Crazy. Yeah, it's it's less crazy because the the spells that come out of the like your tactical spells are not being dealt by that hero. They're they're tactical spells. Um, but it's still it's still pretty good. Like if if you have any sort of, especially if you have like an AOE or a ranged a ranged piece that can do a lot of damage, um, it can be pretty scary. A wand a wand of magic missile out of a pike that deals forty five damage to your uh your your tier one unit can be pretty devastating. All right, so where is Winslay going to take this fight? Where is he going to deploy these units? And critically, is he going to have the survivability here? I get it. Go it. I think I think Winslay might want to try to use these gremlins to flip around these guys. Yeah, Wanda Blizzards is so good. It's I don't think it's broken in this in this format, but it is a very very powerful tool. You just you do need to use strength and effects on the on the hero in order for the wand to actually like really kick butt. But if you do that like against all these low tier units with not insane amounts of resistance, you can usually pick one or two units off, um, or or at the very least a bunch of models. Yeah, electrified and burning and poison are a lot worse now though than they than they were on previous patches. Like the you ha you have to be stacking them really really fast in order to keep pace with the way damage used to scale. I'm more thinking like okay, so this is you know free game for right? I cast fulmination on him. His inquisitor has a stack of electrified. Across the next three turns, it's going to deal 12 damage to him, unless. I reapply it next turn, which, in addition to the extra stack, which is going to be an additional 12 damage, it also resets the timer on the stack I applied this turn. So instead of yeah. 12 damage, it'll deal 16. Yeah, it's it's not bad once you have a lot of the exact same damage channel over and over again. Um, but it you kind of need the same dot over and over again uh, for it to be competitive with where it was before but to be fair like where it was before dots were just like mulching tier one units left and right it was really insane how quickly you were killing things at the beginning of the game with with like just poisonous plus also like if you have the what's the call it the alchemist enchantment for support units that lets you clear two status effects yeah when you can stack five electrify on someone that's a lot less easy yeah, well, I mean, you it removes an entire an entire um, like one debuff all of the stacks of it no matter how many there oh, are. Okay. Yeah, I it removes okay. all of all the stacks of one debuff. So it it, it can be pretty rough uh, to try to fight through alchemy if you're trying to do status effects things. Although, hey, look at us! We had an entire day where nobody brought alchemy and nobody brought warding. <laughs> Great job, everybody. Is Winslay, is Winslay going in on it? I mean, like, he's got some options here. These gremlins are going to do an outrageous amount of damage to those guys. Yeah, 2x fortune, misfortune on a giant chunk of, of Ninju's board is a pretty big deal. I don't know what sort of tools Ninju has in order to clear um, misfortune, but if he doesn't have any, then this could be a problem for him. Um, I don't know about this summon. Yeah, this is very, very... Uh, aggressive yeah exactly if you apply a stack every single turn it comes out at, at better after turn four 
after four turns in a row and it's not dead i got into an argument with like some idiot some troll who was like who came to one of the videos to argue with me about how uh dots were like better now in the their current patch but like i don't even know how to argue with people like that because like if you just do a tiny amount of arithmetic then you see that right. yes da damage over time was nerfed and i actually think that that's probably okay because it, it mostly wasn't an important thing in the late game but it was very very powerful in the early game against units with uh, zero status resistance um and you know very very little base uh elemental resistance like you were just killing everything with like one or two stacks of, of poison or whatever um but like yeah the it's it is inarguable that it is definitely worse now um and i think that's a feature i think that's a feature all right so what is Wednesday going to do with these gremlins I, I like the the most obvious thing would be to flip the the snow spirits around and then try to kill uh kill them but because the snow spirits do have the rap, rapid evolution slip away like i don't think he's gonna get that this is so tough because like for both of these both of these guys they're so unbelievably glassy that whoever gets the the first the first big engagement turn and kills three units is probably the person who wins this um but they've been pretty pretty careful about uh moving around so far and ninju does have the the advantage on big ranged artillery pieces um like here you can see that winslaya has a ruler with no magical attack uh he's got access to mana unchained which is very strong but no magical attack there and no magical attack here and no battle mages so like Winslaya is the aggressor. He needs to attack uh, Ninju because Ninju can potentially just hurl uh, Sunders at him all day long. And it looks like Ninju did bring the Satirical Orb. Is that what we're seeing here? Yeah, he did bring the Satirical Orb. So Despair is not bad. Um, like this is something where it's it's mostly used for like assassinating things. Um, but in the event that you really want to take like an enemy ruler off of the the battlefield or at least dramatically cap their their damage uh by pushing them into fumble range uh, a satirical orb is actually really good uh especially if you can get the arcane strength for extra status resistance ignoring i know i messed up yeah <laughs> so bad so bad uh probably not what i want to you know yeah i know I'm counting is flanked because you're not you're yeah Defense mode. Uh huh. <laughs> hey, you know what? There, there are ways you could break defense mode. Uh, I, I have <laughs> considered that. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's do this like this and waste some of my stuff here. So Winslay just dropped in the mana unchained onto the, all of those guys. Uh, I think that's that's probably still like a great application there. Um, if he can get any extra damage off of these guys and, and take those down, that could be really neat. Uh, but yeah, it looks like he's not going to be able to flank these no matter what he does. Oh well, yeah, you made him turn around, so he's not flanked still. <laughs> yeah, that's so sad. I should have put it on the other side at least. At least, at least. At least. Should have done the turn around first. Could yeah. Save that spell cast. I, for some reason, thought that was a really good spot for him. <laughs> I. He could. He could have also um, done the turn around on the astral serpent, right? I. I still yes. can. I don't think I want to though. I. I would consider that. The serpent is gonna just like absolutely demolish his uh his crocodile. Like this is this is where oops all lightning damage really just like laughs all over Primal and is one of the, the things holding Primal back from being like top 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 tier, in addition to their economy being good, but nothing nothing like record breaking. Um they they have a glaring white lightning weakness on all of their units uh, or all of their their summons because they're all ethereal, so like that they they're good but they do have they do have some real some real limits and this is a this is a way to to really tromp, trample here yeah poisonous anvil guards are really fun I think that um, poisonous is something that we wanna that I wanna try on something in the 
near future in the skirmish mod because uh, I, I have played with it a little bit on on empire mode and it's pretty good there but like you you need a very particular enemy um in order for the damage over time to really to really ramp up but in skirmish mod so many of these units are very very low tier and so taking uh you know like a couple of extra stacks of poison onto all of your enemy units can actually make a big difference in terms of the damage out outcomes for you i just i i think you need a really good defensive shell and like the most obvious defensive shell that that works with well with that is uh industrious but we play industrious a lot so i i don't probably don't want to do that again um I'll, I'll figure something out i think i think in order to make poisonous work you do want to lean into the defensibility side so although you might be attracted to try it with a uh, hideous stench Hideous Stench is so offensively geared, um, and, and Poisonous Stench is, is really kind of so defensively geared that they are are kind of at a, at odds with one another. The best thing that you can do to support Hideous Stench is either freeze people or just kill them, because um, then standing next to them is not a downside, then, it, then it's a good thing. Uh, but if you stand next to them and you do not successfully kill them and you just apply a bunch of damage over time That'll make it so that like they'll gradually be losing models or whatever Then they'll be just doing tons and tons of damage to you. Um, so hideous stench I think the first thing you probably want to pair hideous stench with is something that's going to be just doing consistent large amounts of uh, Elemental damage so hideous stench is like most common uh, pairing is with something like mystic but Mystic does have some problems with um, Frontline, so it's not as powerful there. I think it's actually genuinely best on Barbarians, because Barbarians have a combination of a powerful stun on their Warriors, uh, and therefore a great way to use the minus status resistance, because stuns are really, really strong. You also, uh, for the Barbarians, you have access to elemental damage by access of, of their, their Savage Strike. Um, but you can use it also on on high but which one the other traits that you want to pair it with defensive things most of the time probably like like hardy or tough or resistant um because you just want to do stuff to like slow the pace of combat down uh and and make it so that your the poison that you're that you're adding is generally going to be best and then you also probably want to be supporting po the or rather the, the hideous that you're, you're doing you're just doing extra elemental damage it's very different. Oh, Elemental okay. damage you wanna you wanna yeah. maximize yeah. Um, in order to use hideous stench. Yeah, dragon rollers. Dragon rollers are good. Dragon rollers are good with hideous stench. Um, but yeah, elemental damage is is really where you wanna go in order to to juice that resistance. The yeah, minus two I, resistance. I You could do Mount Masters. Um, I think that that might be the one defensible case for Mount Masters. I, I think generally Mount Masters is pretty bad. I think that generally Mount Masters probably needs to give plus five hit points, and also um, you start with the the mount for your ruler, like always. Yeah, both of you, both of you, your defensive core is slip away. <laughs> you guys just keep doing this over and over again. So if you want to do a semi-meta uh, swamp build, then I think you want to choose either Poisonous or Hideous Stench. I don't think the two of them together uh, offer a lot, as like, nearly as much synergy, because because the the Poisonous Stench uh, Poisonous is more for stall, and Hideous Stench is more for um, like big high damage glass breakers. Um, but it, if you if you want to use one or the other, I think Hideous Stench with uh, barbarians or high or or i guess even primals could do it actually um because they they do have access to like consistent damage output there and as an elemental damage type because of the the fury of the x ability adding uh elemental damage when it stacks up all the way but i, I think you're usually going to get more value out of barbarian because of the the stun also interacting there and then if you're playing poisonous i think you would want to go in a completely different direction and probably play industrious but like you can have an industrious swamp that's that's fine it's okay yeah if you're leaning more stench um then dragon ruler is great for for getting good value there uh and then i would i would probably recommend some sort of um elemental damage type uh tome so like cryomancy 
or um, zeal can also be really powerful because that is another uh, resistance based thing that you can do tons of damage with um, but yeah any, anything that you think where you can just do tons of damage really quickly is the the best the best way to use a hideous stench that and like stuns full out stuns because full out stuns are also great when it comes to just offensive pressure it, it does improve the proc rate of Poisonous, but, like, in order to get good value out of Hideous Stench, you need to kill enemy units during your turn, um, and Poisonous does not help in any way, shape, or form on that front, um, and so I don't think it's worth it. And then, so pack tactics actually can be pretty good. It just depends on how much you're going to manual Void Talon, because, like, if you're going to do a lot of manual combat, then the things that modify... Um, like your your guys for standing next to each other are a lot better but if you're gonna do a lot of auto combats or exclusively auto combats then those things do get worse yeah, you can still randomly get them but the, the, typically you need a lot of units in a combat in order for the ai to accidentally unlock those those things um pack tactics is a little different in that you don't need it's always been an auto hit it's always been an auto hit <laughs> It, most of the time you just didn't care because like inquisitors auto hitting didn't matter because you usually just didn't need them um and then they made their hp and defense a little better and then people started using them a little more but like the auto hit still like just mostly didn't matter but now there's now there's tome of mists so the uh the think, opportunity to auto hit is a lot better now i think the auto hit on an attack that has a 90 percent chance of inflicting stun is pretty yeah, it it's pretty seriously. good, uh, but they they remain pretty fragile, and so, like, th they're more support units than anything else. Like, you can bring some Inquisitors, like here, Winslayer has, has two in a 15 stack, but, like, if this was a late-game real combat with, on, like, turn 50 or 60, a bunch of Inquisitors are gonna mostly fail their stun checks, like, most of the time. It depends, no, but, but like, we, we, we have had fights with, with a bunch of Inquisitors, and when when you're, they're fighting against armies like this, uh, where armies are fair, then they're pretty good, uh, but against unfair armies with just like a gazillion tier 5s and 15 status resistance on everything, they die pretty quickly. Well, yeah, Actually, against tier 5s. Well, yeah, yeah, but even, like, Tier 3s against Tier 3s, it does depend a lot on what sort of support is available for both of them. Because, um, like, it, they, Inquisitors do great against enemies who do not have status resistance set up, but if you have enough support units, that's plus 3 because of the, the warding. Um, and then depending on what sort of tools you have access to, if you have, like, a, a Tome of Alchemy, for instance, then the, the auto stun is a lot less impressive. Yeah, I think pack tactics is is pretty good in terms of generating offensive value. Um, I think it I think it does work with Vine Prison, although I haven't tested it. So we should we should actually try that. If pack tactics works with Vine Prison, then that's uh, still probably not where you want to be when it comes to auto resolve. Because like frankly, the AI will probably just cast Vine Prison on like one unit and then not successfully do anything to mess them up. Um, but it, it, in manual combats, so that sounds like it could do a lot of damage. But I, I think that if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go with hideous stench, you need to figure out which hot shots I'm taking. Pack tactics is not bad. Um, pack tactics is not bad. Pro probably a little bit of survivability isn't a bad thing either. But you you know you could do you could do uh, swamp adaptation and hideous stench in hardy, and that that sounds like it would all it would be fine. And then, and then if you're actually doing that and you're fighting in the swamp and you're transforming everything into swamp, then you know what? You actually get a, a nice little bonus on your elemental uh, damage type because that means that you're going to be fighting in a, a universe where everyone is wet. So there's going to be a lot of extra uh, lightning weakness and frost weakness. So you could turn that actually into a, another way to juice the hideous stench. I think that is that is possible. You you generally do not want to spend a point on swamp adaptation, but if you're role playing, you're role playing, and that's fine. Um, yeah, I actually think that that could be pretty reasonable, to be honest. You probably want barbarian just so you have a uh, faster clear uh, as well as the extra elemental damage. But but I think high can also use uh, 
the, the hideous sanctuary powerfully as long as you also have a status debuff that you want to apply like um you're ru running tome of cryomancy and you have ways to freeze people yeah you need to get one materium early like kind of no matter what you're doing um so if you're gonna do that uh i would say taking a level what, like at level four take the materium affinity pick and then maybe take alchemy as your second tier one um and then that actually is fine because like that'll get you to materium one at almost the exact same time in terms of pacing as someone who just started with one materium uh because you take like you get zero materium for the first like you know three or four turns or whatever and then you're then you hit your hero hits level four four and then you start collecting one and then on like turn 10 or 11 you unlock your uh tome of alchemy and then you start collecting your second ma uh, materium and it offsets the turns where you had zero Looks like here, Winslay is going all in on trying to to push this down and and use this one primal crocodile. He's already taken out one of uh, one of the snow spirits here out of Ninju, and successfully did get the freeze on that astral wisp. That's pretty neat. But now now Winslay is positioned where hopefully this phase beast can drop in and do some some pretty spooky stuff yeah because if this thing drops in here and does a flank attack against the frost wyvern that could that could be pretty messed up nine eight although this is frost resistant so maybe he's gonna go somewhere else with this phase beast we'll see we'll see because this thing actually could also take out a gremlin maybe in one hit if he can flank You guys both brought oops all all skirmishers, so uh, that that's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> I didn't get any value after that that advance. Well, I got some frozens, I guess. Hey, you killed one of his his snow spirits. I don't want to hear no value. <laughs> it's true, but how many do... mine will he get this turn? Yeah, that's that's the problem. And say you, you know that if you have a uh, defense mode because you have a shield wall then you can actually add more physical defense to your guys and then they don't take so much damage when they get shot yeah that's if they do physical damage though but <laughs> well or, or you could have a like a support unit use the defense mode uh warding i'd like to take a, like to take a moment to say that this is a 99 percent chance so if it doesn't work i'm gonna ult that four <laughs> yes yeah, there we go no. Oh baby! How could you so goodbye. there. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! I'm so dead. Not here. like this. <laughs> Not like this. <laughs> so there, what we got to see was um, uh, Ninju is playing with the Tome of Summoning, which we noticed from the uh, the Astral Wisps, and so he had access to the mind control. Yeah, in two turns. Why can't you fumble? I put fumble chance on you. Uh, you have three things of fumble chance. Is it only? Does it not stack the fumble chance then? Uh, misfortune. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You know what happens every once in a while? Forty percent isn't zero. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, look at that phase beast just run in and execute that, that frost wyvern. Yeah, this is this is gonna be pretty bad for uh for Winslayer right here. There's just no way around it. He did not have the defensive tools, and now there it is. There's the uh the spell shield blink and probably stunning flash. He could potentially go in and just attack the uh the gremlin, but I think the the stun makes more sense, yep. Adept Settlers and Prolific Swarmers. So I think Adept Settlers is very, very good uh, when once you start moving into like using your city economy more. That's not like crucial for um, 
for barbarians, but it's not going to hold you back either. Because with barbarians, if you can get like a bunch of cities really quickly and start using your draft really fast, then barbarians, because they have access to like really good units the entire time, they actually use extra cities uh, even better than like yeah. some folks oh. do. Because if your dra if your draft is like building pe peasant pikemen for you, then like you you're oh, by skipping out on the draft, you're just saving yourself gold for your oh, empire. <laughs> oh my god, dude, this is. <laughs> That's my tier two. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I, I I is it your tier two? That's a gremlin. I just hit I'm gonna need you to provide some uh, evidence of that because it looks <laughs> like it's probably dead. Is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ritual cannibals. So prolific swarmers is mostly not good. It it does kind of depend on what you're trying to do, but mo most of the time, prolific swarmers does not give you an enormous uh, e economic advantage. It's good for uh, keeping your upkeep cost down, um, and it can be fun. But like, if you want to play around with chaos stuff, yeah, I think ritual cannibals is better in manual combats and better in auto resolves and better on the economy side. Um, and so, like, you just don't. Obviously, you don't take it if you're if you're not planning on um, allowing yourself to be at least a little bit evil. But I, I think overall, it's it's pretty fun. I think it's definitely the best of the uh, the chaos picks right now. You should. That seems like good damage on your part, actually. I forgot to use over channel. Ah, uh, you'll be fine. I, I remembered after I had already. You saved your over channel strategically, Ninju, so that way you could yeah, trap, totally. trap him. Yep, that's what you did. Did you know that this guy is not like in a uh, which we'll call it zone of control? If I wanted to, I can actually summon right now. Yeah, chaos is very hit or miss. There, there are some uh, chaos things that are genuinely very strong, like Tome of Revelry. Even after all the nerfs to Scald, remains like probably one of the best tomes in um tier two i think it's i think it's a little worse than tome of mists and tome of construct but i, th I think that overall it is one of the best uh tier two tomes and then tome of devastation i think is is one of the best tier threes if not the best tier three depending on what your build is trying to do and so like there are some really powerful things available to chaos mages but there's also like a lot of misses here on winslay side winslay is playing with the uh tome of mayhem which means that he has access to gremlins and gremlins can be good they can be good but they're very fragile. Uh, the bigger thing that we haven't seen out of Winslay so far is the Infectious Insanity. I'm not sure if he's afraid of using that or if he just doesn't have the casting points or if he doesn't think it's important. But like, if I were Winslay here, I would probably consider uh, hitting his spell or hitting um, Ninju's Spellbreaker with Infectious Insanity. Because yeah, the Misfortune can be good. Um, I, I think Infectious Insanity is the best part of that that package overall, uh, especially in a format like this. Infectious Insanity obviously goes like way down when you're playing in a normal combat, like a normal game, because uh, it, it starts off really, really good, but uh, there's a lot of status resistance and mind control immunities and control loss immunities and stuff. And so like towards the, the end of the game, Infectious Insanity just doesn't have anywhere to go. Uh, but here, Winslay, you can, you can do this, man. You can infectious insanity this guy with like a 27 percent chance and be successful oh he's taking out ninju's supports that's very clever i wasn't sure very clever i wasn't sure yeah taking out his supports is is pretty good But now this is this is the turn where it, unless Winslaya can can like pull it back, he's going to be in a lot of trouble because so far the the uh, phase beasts have gone unchecked. The spear the spellbreaker has been able to use the star purge, so it's already gotten a, a good chunk of value. Um, but you know, if Winslaya can kill a couple of more of these units, it doesn't look like it's entire entirely over it is a big problem for Winslayer that this uh gremlin has been mind controlled but that's not gonna be that's not gonna be a problem forever eventually that the gremlin will either go back to Winslayer or it'll die um and it'll just be providing solid amounts of value to ninju in the meantime 
mostly that one. That, that one was that one was actually really good behind you. This is every single turn that can do that. Not bad, not bad. When you don't have charge resistance, not bad. But yeah, like the pyromancy is like okay. It's I think worse than um, the other two big elemental damage types, but I think it's broadly better than Tome of Roots and uh, the Blight damage, because at least fire damage does do extra damage to uh, to snow spirits, and those are those are pretty important. And of course, it deals extra damage to uh, undead, and that can be important depending on where what format you're playing on and, and whatnot. I can't believe that Winslay went in on that uh, lightning elemental with his summon, but I guess it was there. Oh, oh. It pops back with slip away. Yep, there it goes. I, I hope you guys are proud of yourselves and each other. <laughs> slip away on everything. <laughs> I'm so disappointed I couldn't have gotten Hunter Spiders, because they would have had slip away too. Yeah, they they are pretty good. It, I think we could talk to Vadok about that because we have to, I've talked to him about maybe introducing like an inn where you could recruit things from Ancient Wonders on like a a random a rotating schedule or something like that. I think that would be fun. Um, and ways to get hunter spiders and ice spiders I think would be good for for animals. But like, there's there's still pretty reasonable animals that are available in game if you want them. Like, uh, a Killing Momentum Razorback in this format is actually pretty good, and a, a Killing Momentum Phase Beast is obviously a little bit better. That's what's about to happen, huh? How do you get Killing Momentum on Phase Beast? Uh, you take the Tome of Beasts and a Wild Speaker, um, and then um. Phase Beast is a an animal tag. Yeah, okay, okay. So it, it kills its first guy and then gets its action back and then uh and then th these guys can actually phase here. Can they? Did they leave the the phase actually alone for the phase beast? Cuz this sure looks like uh it's something that doesn't require all three actions anymore. And that's definitely not the case with a normal phase, right? No, maybe maybe it is the way it is. Yeah, so the phase beast does does not actually get to kill momentum phase as much as it used to. Unfortunate for the the, the phase beast, but still pretty good. Teleport behind to kill somebody and then slap their friend for 45 damage or whatever can be a, a pretty good way to introduce pain into your enemy formation. So where is Winslay going to go with this crocodile? hes I don't think he's going to be able to take out the other soother. Um, and, you know, he, Winslay is doing a lot of work against uh, Ninju's front line there, chewing a bunch of things up during this turn. Yeah, their, their front lines just vanished. Oh my god. But I guess that makes sense. When you got, when you got no defense tools on either side... Uh, combat's gonna be pretty, pretty fast. Wait, what's, what's a UI glitch, Anthony? The, uh, the, the phase, the phase bar thing being a UI glitch? Is it, act it's actually, like, three full, full dots, but then one is supposed to be, like, empty for indicating that, that you do get to do something afterwards, but you have to have all your action points, and then if you have slowed and frozen at the same time, then you're SOL because of the the order in which it removes the uh, the debuffs. I mean, honestly, like right now, it, this is so messy on both sides that uh, although it looks to me like Ninju is still in charge. The combat is definitely going back and forth very, very quickly. They're like the the introduction of these summons is a big deal on Winslay's side, and then of course on Ninju's side, he does have access to a dark ritual there, um, and so the the opportunities for a bunch of extra units because there's already two here. Uh, there's if you move this slither out of the way, then there's three here potentially four. 
Oh boy. Yeah, that this is this is a lot of um, potential corpses that you can turn into zombies if if people are not in the right the right location. There's two right there already. Three if he kills that lesser snow spirit. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Because I, I think Ninju dropping in like three or four decaying zombies should probably be enough to, to win the rest of the fight. But I guess, you know, Winslade does have melee strike and or a little bit of uh, fire damage here and a little, or, or spirit damage here. Uh, and units to flank with. I'm pretty sure you kick my butt now. Let's find out. So what is Ninju's plan? Gosh, I really wanted to infectious and huh? sandy and summon here. Like so oh, he, he was on fire. I see. Okay. Could you not? Did you forget? No, the problem was is that the units that he brought wouldn't have been super valuable to obtain. They could have blown yeah. up ranged attacks and um, Tier ones where I could have tried to insane a storm spirit, but there's no telling what he's gonna target, you know? Like, yeah. I I probably could have and should have done that over where I put my crocodile. <laughs> what was your uh insane chance on a spellbreaker? Uh this is a good good question. I I forget uh um, Oh that's I didn't so check funny. It. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Gortus counts as a, uh, a magic origin. <laughs> You're gonna win. No way you don't win now. <laughs> yeah. Ninju's gonna Ninju's gonna crunk some units here. No way around it. I think he's. I think. I think he's gonna kill enough units this turn and then activate his uh, dark ritual that it'll be impossible for for Winslay to pull it back. <laughs> you just kill him like so that. bad. That's so rude. Hey, you know what? At least you're gonna get that gremlin back soon, probably. <laughs> unless unless you use Druid of Cycles on it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Maybe that's maybe that's better than using a uh, Tome of Beacon, oh, you're right. right? Yeah, take the magic summons and sacrifice. I mean, it's instantly they're gone. Instantly oh, they're gone. It, it does require your opponent to have magic origin units, though, and like I, there have yeah, been builds where fine. people just don't have any. You don't have line of sight on that. That's so. That's, okay. that's a big rock. Just saying. Yes. Yeah, you have this Hello. thing. That's what I thought you were gonna do. Boom. Oh. No. Yep. Uh, that's that's how oh, Phase no. Beast rock and roll. Yes. No. My plan is coming. <laughs> He's, the the misfortune is gonna start oh. tearing him apart now. Yeah. Looks like Man. yeah. Fumble, fumble. That's that is that is actually putting in work. That is a lot of uh, fumble that that mark of misfortune is inflicting here. But I don't I don't think it matters. Yeah, the uh, tome of summoning really just like rocked you here. <laughs> no more uh, gremlins, I guess. Shame. It I was like, supposed I to be like a funny theory. gimmick, but turns out it was just good. <laughs> it's really good against people who have a lot of magic order units, and obviously really bad against people who have none. Um, and this this build of Winslayer does look particularly fragile to Toma summoning here. Yep. It does. It definitely does. Yep. And and a, a problem with spellbreakers as well. What? Yes. What? Did I get him earlier? When did you get misfortune? I must. Uh, you hit, you hit uh, almost all of his high value units with your uh, your misfortune. Yes. Yeah, uh, and then and then you just been, been refreshing the the stacks with all of your normal attacks. So I, a lot of his stuff will have will have fumbles. No. Yep. That makes sense. 
So Winslay is pieces. What does he have left? He's got an Inquisitor? Yeah. All of these summons are man. <laughs> um, almost. Th this is the big problem with diseased. Is uh, it's like the one of the most commonly resisted status immunities in like in the entire game. It's so brutal if you do get hit by it, though. Yes, it is. It, that is absolutely true. It is brutal if it if it applies to your armies and like you don't have a way to stop it, then it it does run over you. But there's just so many different tags that are naturally immune to diseased. So what what is Winslay's best shot here? He's got access to a behind you uh, on this Kremlin, um, so it's gonna deal probably more damage to this guy. Well, he's getting a flank and a triple attack, so he's probably almost certainly gonna deal more damage with just a melee attack if that's what he's trying to do. Um, but I, don't, I actually don't know how Winslay could win from this position. I think it would be pretty difficult. The uh, the front the the early game skirmishing that they did was mostly net positive for for ninju and then summoning here to get three attacks is better than getting a single attack and putting the triple thrashing off the the flank i actually i hope this is more damage all right uh, not enough not enough by seven Well, you do have you do have other units that can do damage. Yeah, you wanna you wanna spend those unit actions on that? <laughs> not really, no, not at this point. I'm like on top of all of your shit. You can totally move some slither halflings away to get rid of this spellbreaker that I genuinely just don't need at this point. <laughs> yeah, the spellbreaker's targets have uh, mostly been dealt with. Although it, it is good for Winslaya, if he can kill that, that is a tier three, so that would be good for his morale. Indeed. This spellbreaker like just ended up like I positioned him to try to get him to be, you know, wherever things go, he should have some good shots. Uh, and instead just everything in his range died very fast. Yeah. Both both of you guys were like insanely glassy, so that does that does make sense. So where, where is Winslay going to try to use this Inquisitor? Like, one tool that he does have access oh to God, that he hasn't... No, I he has Membrane! Membrane! Astral Serpents are actually good right, units. You Can you believe it? <laughs> you would. <laughs> it's so annoying. <laughs> oh, I can believe it. Very unfortunate. I would say it does have ritual cannibals here on all of his guys, but unfortunately for him, and this let this be a lesson to you if you're interested in playing the, the skirmish mod, when you go in on all of these magic origin units the way that Winslay has here, the the ch the choices that you make in regards to the abilities for your heroes and your your races and stuff do start to drop off. And so ritual cannibals, if you're if you're trying to really get the most out of it, then you don't want to be having a front line that's just like oops, all skirmishers that have happen to have a uh, rapid evolution enchantment on them. I think a, a mix of things probably would help him here. I so really I think, like yeah, Ancient Governor, I've heard I've heard mixed things on Ancient Governor. I think, broadly speaking, you probably don't need it because um, one point uh, is not generally worth some stability. But I think that I've, I've heard good uh, reports with it in high particularly, because, like, most of the time, you don't care that much if all of your other cities are growing as quickly, and just getting extra stability in your capital can be a pretty big deal. And, like, the the tiny amounts of research that you get uh, are a lot more if you get it earlier. But the problem is that, like, yeah, scales, uh, health, breath, those are generally a lot stronger when it comes to scaling up your economy than a, a couple of extra research points at the beginning of the game. 
Um, yeah. So okay. it, I think it's build dependent. It, I think if you can use the stability, which mostly means if you're playing high, then you can consider Ancient Governor. Um, and if you have a really fast start where you happen to, to find like an extra banner or two and you just have like an extra level up. Because the thing is that things like uh, Exhilarating Roar, that's an incredibly powerful ability. Um, and then... Uh, but but it doesn't really do anything unless you have other units uh and so like it if you manage to get to level four really fast because you have a couple of banners then like you kind of don't need to take exhilarating roar because you don't have any units to to haste up but if you if you are in that position you're probably better off just taking scales too um most of the time or, or extra health because yeah it's it's just it's so narrow like you need you need to have a lot of extra experience points really early for uh ancient governor to to pay itself off All right, give me my morale back. you can do like the respec uh as well that that is pretty reasonable it's just that it, it really does depend on like what sort of tools you have in your build um for scaling up your economy because if you're doing that and you're like taking a, a level up on your dragon in order to get a little bit of extra knowledge, then the rest of your army is going to be a lot weaker. So the rest of your army needs to conversely be a lot stronger to pick up that that slack for your dragon. Um, and that's that's typically not worth it in terms of the the cost to effort payout. I think I think ancient governor is usually not good unless you unless you just have a lot of extra experience points laying around. Yeah, the you can clear that fight wonders are so good. That was a great video. Winsley, uh, he did a fantastic job with that one. I'm, I'm hoping that that keeps getting more attention. Um, because some of, some of the videos that that he has worked on, I know he has put a lot of work and and time and effort into. And uh, you know, I I think that there's a lot of value on YouTube when it comes to like the video game spaces, but the video game spaces really are t designed more for education or more for entertainment than for education about the games. And so like I information style videos, the way that Winslaya makes can uh, have some issues um, performing well because they, they're, they're not the sort of thing that people just like watch for fun, I guess is the, the big problem. Um, I've got three cities now on turn 11. Yeah, three cities on turn 11 is a fantastic pacing. You don't always have to do that um, simply because like there are other ways to scale up your economy now, but getting a bunch of extra cities early if you have the gold to use their production efficiently and scale things up really quickly is really good, especially if you play as something like Industrious or Barbarian where your early game um, units are actually useful then that is then it is a, a very very powerful thing to get uh, more of them early okay. are you are you trying to kill all of uh, this phase beasts temporary HP is that your is that your win condition now when when saya This has been a very interesting session, though. I think that the the options for Druid of the Cycle with, um, like, the Tome of Beacon or potentially Tome of Summoning against people who are playing around with uh, a bunch of Magic Origin units could be interesting. I do like here the, the Astral Wisp uh, potential combo with Tome of Dragons. And this is, like, the, the kind of stuff that I want to get people playing around with whenever it comes to the skirmish mod. So if you're if you're interested in this content, Void Talon, or anyone else who's here in, in a chat and you want to see more of it, you know, like, like it. But more importantly, um, comment in the Discord channel uh, for either me or Winslaya, because I want to get us to the point where we can actually host a tournament of this before the Eldritch Realms DLC would be my ideal time frame which means that like we don't have an infinite amount of time to get that done um because <laughs> now it's april uh but you know we, we we still have a little bit of time to pull that together uh and i you know even if you're not like a person who wants to play the skirmishes literally all day long we might come up with a a way to do a, a skirmish tournament format where like people play uh with each other um like not all on saturdays just whenever whenever they're available whatever works 
best for everyone. This guy's no longer refuge, is he? Ah, freaking hell. This unit is not refuged. Where is where is Winsaya talking about yeah. refuge? I don't see refuge on anything. And these and these crocodiles are they're holding on. They're gonna do what they can to to execute his backline, but unless unless Winsay can come up with a solution for this uh phase beast, I think I think Ninji's gonna get it, because an uncountered phase beast is just an enormous problem. They're very fragile, but they kill things in like one turn pretty consistently. Yeah, playing playing stuff casually is fine too. Um, like the thing is that when it comes to a skirmish mod fight, like you can play as casually as you want, uh, and it wastes absolutely nobody's time because you like, you know, the, these things are are fun and fast and over in like an hour and a half. Um, but I, I know that there have been some people who have come well, into our multiplayer group, uh, and, and had more of a, a casual approach, especially to, like, some, uh, the knowledge, and fallen really behind on that and gotten frustrated. What's the stun chance on him? Is it just guaranteed? It's not, it's like... No. It's, uh, 30%. Yeah, 30%, and it checks against status resistance, so... You just got... Let's see, maybe we can scroll up in the combat history for when that crocodile attacked the first time. <laughs> um, it's about a 30% chance, it looks like. I feel yeah, because like you got... We're trying to kill that thing, but I'm just going to get this guy on other units. He's got zero, zero status remo uh, resistance on these crocodiles. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think Winsaya can get it, but, you know, he's, he's doing his best. He's doing his best. Are you going to attack your own gremlin? No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> Crash! Oh, crash! No, is that what happened? Did it? Did you attack the the wisp and then crash? Oh, oh! It just That's slowed down fun. immensely. It didn't. It seems like it's just processing the action way longer than I would expect it to. It's Weird. Pretty simple action. Succeeded the check. It took 15 damage. I don't know what else. There oh, is. when I click on a unit, it slows down so much. Oh no! What oh no! Check your, uh, check your task manager, see if maybe there's something we need to hold your memory. That's a good point. Um, you want me to open that up and see what's going on here? Oh yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. Or, or you could click auto-resolve and see what happens. <laughs> now that, I'm not gonna do. <laughs> that, that could crash your computer in an instant. Yeah, not good. <laughs> I think I think Winsay is just tr he's trying to find something, but he's got he's got nowhere for these guys to go. Around. A bunch of them are probably gonna get crunked next turn. He's gonna have what he's got a support unit left that can't even go anywhere because if he tries to move it, it'll die. Yeah. All right. Well, he's gonna pass it to Ninju, and then Ninju will uh, see what he can get done on this 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 turn. But I I think he can probably finish up enough of uh, Winslay's army that it should be impossible for Winslay to win. Even if he has both heroes, I think he's just gonna lose the like almost the rest of his army. Uh, is it my turn? Yep. Okay. So uh, you want to see something really funny? You're about to steal another unit off of me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it, it failed a 73% <laughs> chance that time. Bummer. I guess that was pretty funny though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was worth it. <laughs> so this Gortusk matriarch just spent the almost the entire time working for Ninju. Imagine your uh your signature oh. skill just making your opponent's army stronger. Oof. Stop hitting my units that are under your control. It's 
Um, you know, maybe they would be OP at three points, but the thing is, is that Eagle Mounts really don't give you any survivability, um, and so it's, it's conceivable that they would be fine at three, because they, they, they do offer you a lot on the strategic layer, that is, that is a big, yeah, there, there's, there it is, Ninju has pulled the trigger and, and made four decaying zombies, I don't see it anyway, Winslayer can win from this, um, but, yeah, eagle mounts they they offer you so much in terms of value on the uh, the world map that it is it is impossible. Uh, I mean maybe the thing is that like I the math on doing damage against the spellbreaker I I don't think is worth it. Uh, to worry about because it can't do anything right now anyway like yeah. if you were even if you were to phase it away and do like one shot it would do such a tiny amount of damage that i don't think it matters it mostly just matters about like the uh the morale economy which right now your morale is not about to collapse um so i don't i don't think it matters that the spellbreaker isn't technically dead right now but we will see we will see I think I think I think all of these uh, zombies and phase beasts are going to be a much bigger problem for you. Yeah, I should have maybe gone adjacent to that hero. Now that I see what happened there. I mean, you could have, but you would have just watched the the hero as it used dark ritual. Oh yeah. Uh, what? Twenty five percent shot. Uh, the dark ritual is not blocked what? by ZOC. What? The what fumble was that? killed that. Did you fumble shoot yourself? Yes. Did the fumble kill you? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Does, is Winslay gonna just secretly win this because <laughs> your units are, are are betraying themselves? Power fumbles. What? <laughs> Power hey, he's got misfortune down. I mean it's not like it's not like Winslay didn't earn these. Yeah, the thing is, is that, like, Eagle Mounts, they only offer you flight and speed, but flight and speed are, um, like, really, really, really powerful when it comes to early game uh, scouting and clearing and stuff. And so the economy side of, of Eagles are very difficult to uh, to underestimate, or to, they're, they're very, yes, no, they're easy to underestimate. Um, because, like, you, you really, at 8 movement speed, and or 8 times 5, you get to move 8 tiles at um, 5 movement <laughs> movement points each with all of your units as soon as you take Eagle Riders, whereas, like, normal movement on the, the overworld map on, like, regular tiles costs 6 points per tile, and your units will have 32 movement. So you basically move from moving, like, 5 tiles per turn on most of your units outside of roads up to like eight tiles uh, per turn which in terms of percentage means like you know you're you're not moving twice as fast as everybody else but you're moving really damn close to twice as fast as everybody else and you have a gigantic advantage on the vision because they're flying and you have some minor advantages in combat because they're flying although flying is not as powerful in combat as as it probably could be um and then it offers you absolutely no durability so i think i think you could test it with three uh, but the thing is, is that like Eagle Riders is one of those things that I, I think is sort of like Barbarians where it has like a really, really, really high skill cap where like I, I suspect that if you are good at, at doing evaluation and figuring out where you can take fights with Eagle Mounts that you can probably make it perform kind of well. It's just eh, four is four is a lot. Four is a lot. What is Winslaya trying to do here? Looks like Winslaya is trying to take out Dinju's leader, but Dinju already got all these decaying zombies down. Winslaya, like, if if you if you do kill Ninju's ruler here, I don't think it saves you. And if you don't, then then you're definitely in trouble because Ninju can start shredding with uh, evocations and whatnot here.
And of course, the eagle mounts do have the other problem, like as, as all mounts do, where they are generally not as good towards the end of the game, simply because like you're not going to have an infinite number of uh, racial units that you have optional mount tags on. Um, but, you know, the thing is that there are some really powerful optional mounts towards the end of the game. You, it's just narrow in terms of its application, that's all. Like, if you're, if you're taking eagle mounts, then you're probably uh, thinking about something like Tome of Subjugation. Because those, those are pretty good. Eagle mounted, eagle mounted uh, tyrant knights are actually pretty good. They do a lot of damage um, because they can flank very easily by flying over things. They, they are, have a pretty good time removing units from the board. You do need to come up with ways to protect them. Uh, Tome of Construct, I think, is a pretty reasonable way to protect those sort of eagle-mounted tyrant knights because it prevents them from being flank attacked on the retaliation because they're mostly going to be doing flank attacks themselves, hopefully. Uh, but, you know, overall, you, you got a lot of ways to to use an eagle mount. he has 66. I think with thrashing that should kill, right? 54 versus 66, and how much uh, is... Uh, 54, you won't go up to the 66, you think? Uh, what percentage does it add? 25% I mean, hey, per attack? Hey, Probably. Yeah, hey, are you going to not do that attack? <laughs> yeah. Right, I have to. Yeah. You have to. Attack and find out. Yeah, just slay the spire it. <laughs> oh, no! Damn. Damn. <laughs> 2 HP! All right, so Ninju's ruler is down, but I, I do think that Ninju got all of the value that he needed to um, in terms of getting these. Yeah, the, they don't do anything for your heroes after the start of the game. That is a big problem for uh, the, the mount traits toward you know, like a longer, bigger FFA. I think that in smaller fights, they are very powerful. Um, like here in skirmish mod, mounts are, are ridiculous actually because of the uh, the ways that elephant mounts give you fewer models to work with. Um, and there there are some really great uses for mounts towards the mid and late game. But on your heroes, yeah, they just like drop off very quickly in terms of value. Um, unlike unlike something like resistant or tough or hardy, which is just always giving value to your heroes. Starting with starting with a an extra elephant does not scale particularly well if you are playing with a dragon. That is true. Yeah, the uh, primals have a lot of uh, optional cav. Barbarians and industrious and high all have pretty good ways to use optional cav as well. Um, I think that mystic more than using optional cav. I still think that athletics is like the main way for mystics to get more movement. Uh, in a way that's actually very, very favorable with their, uh, their scouts. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's gonna, Winslay is going to successfully keep Misfortune 3 on all of, uh, all of Ninju's stuff, and that will make it so that Ninju is gonna be, like, fumbling just over and over and over again. Where, where is, yeah, where is I this kind of I, hero I, going? I see what's happening and I'm like, it, I, I wouldn't want this, I, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. I mean, I'm, a, I'm pretty comfortable being in my shoes, I'll be honest. <laughs> Just because crowd, but, yeah, I think you're, yeah, you're pretty good. Hey, thanks for hitting my face piece, by the way, now I can get a charge at that. That's true. Yeah, I, I still think that my money is on Ninju Winslayer. <laughs> I, I think if you can if you can win it from this position, I will be impressed because these these crocodiles are gonna disappear before um, ninjas zombies, and then yeah, you're gonna be pretty badly outnumbered. Zombies are funny. Yeah, no, I, I know that. The the zombies, they're not permanent. They decay. They decay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It's they they are not permanent. They have a very real timer on them. They kill themselves, but they they are going to they are going to decay a lot faster than uh, than Winslay's crocodiles at least. The decay is affected by uh, resistance, right? Uh, the decay is affected by uh, unique elemental resistance, so it's gonna take like it's gonna check against two blight resistance on these decaying zombies, which is why they took eight at the end of their turn rather than ten, so they're forty five out of fifty three. Uh, 
Yeah, when Winslay is now at the, uh, I'm gonna bargain with the the game and and have my my racial units eat things. And those these because they do have uh, access to the draconian transformation and draconic vitality uh, and natural regeneration. Winslay is core at the very least is pretty durable. Um, but unfortunately for him, he still has not come up with a solution for these phase beasts, and they just do too much damage um, and are gonna keep poking holes for the rest of Ninju's uh, units to exploit. Although, you know, I guess anything's possible. He's got these two crocs here with two turns left, one there with one turn left and one with three, so he does at least have a bunch of units for the, the immediate next couple of turns. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Like, there, there is a lot of damage here, at least for a very short period of time for Winslaya. Um, and if he can if he can take out that phase beast, then I, I guess it really is over for uh, for Ninju. I just, I just don't see it, though. I just don't see it as the problem. And this Inquisitor is really low. Although I guess Winslaya's morale is not bad. Not bad. And in the event that those Inquisitors can go the distance, they will be uh, a dangerous threat once they can heal back another model that will that will increase their damage a lot. Okay, so Winslay has removed a lot of the uh, the chaff here. And that is finally pushing Ninju's morale down into low. Forget action economy. Forget blocking units' movement or blocking out units' attacks. How many just straight up kills has Winslay gotten this game from Crocodiles? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not bad. I, like not a lot. Bad. Just the damage. Yeah. Although a lot of that has been flanking, so like, in, in the event that, well, yeah. I wonder why they get so many flanking attacks. Well, there are ways to prevent flanking attacks. Not when, oh, you know what? You could prevent him from summoning a unit behind you by surrounding your unit with six other units. That is true. <laughs> yeah, or by taking Tome of Construct or just clicking defense mode. There, there are ways to. Are th these are these, there are options, or or you know things that that uh, like do pseudo de defense, um, well, like the if, if he tome of construct ability. Defense mode, that means that he didn't kill. That means that he didn't deal damage. That means that he's yeah. stunned. You you and don't have to, to deal damage. You know. You don't have to click literal defense mode in order to enter defense mode. Taunt turns you into defense mode. Off of uh, anvil guards, the shield bash on warriors turns you into defense mode. The, uh, the, like, Tome of Constructs, all of your, your linked mine units enter into defense mode. Um, seriously trying to argue with me that, like... <laughs> like, I, I am serious. If you, if you don't think that there are ways to enter into defense mode proactively, then I think you should read some of them, because there are a lot of them. Uh, okay, but what relevance does that have to the crocodiles here, exactly? You telling me what? that if I had thought to go Tome of Constructs, I think That's crocodiles Yeah, probably. I mean like I, I think that if Winslay and I fought it and I brought the the like the build that I brought against you against uh, I, I, I Winslay, he would have problems. Because he would have he would have no issues. What was the barrier I think without taking the gremlins here? Like we've we've seen primals get absolutely dumpstered in scr in skirmishes before. They're they're good. They are good, but we have seen them lose pretty badly in some fights. But you do need like a lot of defensive tools to to grind out the uh, the summons. Well, no, like. It's, it, 
that, that you need what you need in order to make their summons less valuable is things that make it so their their burst damage is not as effective if they I've if they can't kill if yeah you're on the primal side there and you see that your opponent has taken tome of construct and doesn't get flank attacked do you choose to cast different spells if i have better spells probably what are your better spells uh like melt armor was incredible in our combat like it depends on what you set up your the rest of your build for um like in this particular yeah, format realistically speaking yeah in this particular format ninja you have access to tier three tomes so like the spells that you get access yeah, to so how, up, it, up, on turn 10 does that like build constraint so take the small number of tools that this entire culture demands that you take for this one spell that they can cast you know he could just play primal and not take animus and cast different spells he could do that too that's not that's but just the threat actions. of the crocodiles forces you to do what yeah the threat of the crocodiles forces you to be a lot more proactive at at trying to keep good defensive tools on hand and that was one thing that neither of you brought to this fight like <laughs> You had literally, that. yeah. The more defensive tools that you have, the the less damage that they're like. If you have a, a an anvil guard that enters into a shield wall, it's going to it's going to defend all of your other units, whether or not the the crocodile is attacking the the anvil guard themselves. Like shield wall and warding add a lot of a lot of survivability against these sorts of things without necessarily demanding the exact action. I did have. Yeah, you had you had two, um, and they were they were relatively well positioned, but only relatively. Um, I, like I, I, th I think I think the the bigger issue here was just lack of durability. Like primals, primals are really good against glassy things. They struggle a lot against enemies that don't die. Uh, so this is not auto combat right now, Jason. This is a skirmish battle between Ninju and Winslayer. So this is just towards the end of this fight. Um, we we did a two two skirmishes today, but this is Winslayer and Ninju, and, and it looks like I I still honestly don't know because Ninju has his phase beast here, but now Winslayer has kind of like peeled apart a lot of uh, Ninju's pieces. Ninju at least still has his his astral serpent, but he is he is starting to have some serious problems on his morale side, which is a a big problem for him. My goodness, shield wall shield wall doesn't do anything against um, crocodiles in particular, but like overall, there are lots of tools that you have access to to reduce the output on primals. Um, like dune serpents do physical so you can shield wall against that but all of the other ones do elemental so you can just uh, warding against those and that's even like more efficient because warding is plus three as opposed to the the shield wall um, which it's plus three physical but I, I think across the board ninju probably didn't have enough pressure on um on some of his his backline pieces on Winslaya, because he had this this phase beast and he just didn't like phase over and take out any of the the animists i think i think that could have been that could have been a worthy a worthy use of his time i think also ninju probably could have used the uh the astral like super buff on this phase beast here because that can make it do ridiculous amounts of damage but it, yeah it looks like wow Winslaya still has he still has another animist here alive, uh, just taking around in the background. Oh boy! Oh boy! All right, I guess we'll see. Will Will Winslaya win it yet again with his primals? Maybe, maybe. Displacement. You're gonna make it hard to kill that that unit. Which I mean, you should. He has a lot more actions here. That much is absolutely true. Yeah, the the tools available this turn for Winslaya are pretty scary. He does still have one more turn here on this Primal Croc, and two on this one? No, one on that one. So 
this is this is the last big turn for Winslay to pull it back. If he can if he can eliminate this uh, phase beast here, I think actually he might be able to win. But I think he needs to take it now. Oh hey, are we actually going to be doing the uh, viewer submitted stuff next game? Because or next week? Because if so, you gotta like make the Reddit post today. Yeah, I know. Uh, we we, we at least a week. yeah we can like a we can make a Reddit post or community posts. You need to give them like a form they can submit. I think if you tell someone, just like, type up all of your picks, people are a lot less likely to do that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, here, actually, this might be it. Let's see, Winslaya... Oh, uh, no, I guess... Winslaya is is now dealing with the fact that there is this Nixia, the savior, in the back, and did really doing some damage here. Lightning weapons and melee strike. Although, also critically, to one of the things that that impacted this outcome here is there was no strengthened or fortune on. Um, I mean, like warding is warding is also another thing that like really walks all over primals because it's it's not too difficult to get like massive amounts of AOE bolstered resistance if that's what you're trying to do. Um. But yeah, I guess, you know, Winslay can do just a, a lot of damage to these guys, and if he doesn't fail the, st the stun check on this Astral Membrane and can take out this uh, this Phase Beast with these these Crocodiles, then it, then literally the only thing Ninju has left is, is Nixia the Savior. Did he wait too long to use the, the Decaying Zombies? That might, that might be the case. What is Winslaya gonna do here? Is there a skirmish only tier list? No, but I guess there could be. Like, the, the skirmish only tier list would be pretty meaningfully different because there would be only a handful of things that you would meaningfully want to take. Um, but you know what? That could mean that we could put all of those Tier, tier lists together probably um but in in the skirmish mod because there's no economy aspect to the game um you you really don't need to worry about some of some of the tomes like at all uh you're just you're just worrying about fighting people yeah warding plus alchemy is just ridiculous in terms of increasing your your uh bolstered resistance i think if ninju had had a couple of more defensive tools. I think he could have won this. I'm kind of amazed though that he isn't, because he he had such a meaningful advantage at the at, like initial uh, skirmish. But I guess the initial skirmish, although it was an advantage for Ninju, was not enough to to crush the value of the Crocs here. Yeah, we'll we'll probably come up with something, Jason, soon for um like content created ideas coming from people. I do, I do have a couple of videos that I want to do uh, probably in two weeks, because I think this upcoming week I am mostly going to just do streaming for my birthday stuff, so that way when I need to stop, I get to stop. Yeah, I think Winslay got it here. I think he needed to. I think he needed to kill the Phase Beast this turn because both of those Crocs are disappearing at the end of this turn, so he's going to lose a lot of a lot of pieces really quickly. But he got the Phase Beast, and I think that means he's going to have this battle because now Ninju really only has his his hero left in terms of like pressuring you. Well, for now. <laughs> Considering other options. But you know what? I think that this this fight was really fun and very interesting. Uh, even if it did end up with Winslaya like mostly getting great value out of his primal crocs yet again. I, th I think if you're fighting uh, in the skirmish mod, you need to respect the the possibility of your opponent bringing something like primals, and so like no matter which direction you're going in, even if it is a, a hyper offense kind of direction, you should bring something that will help you uh, in the event that your opponent is doing a lot of extra summoning. Like here, another thing that could have really helped um, Ninju clear these crocs out was just taking lightning weapons. 
uh, which I guess he did have. No, wait, this is Windslayer's Lightning, the Snow Spirit. Right? That's Windslayer's Snow Spirit, I think. Yeah, he did have Lightning Blades, so maybe he just wasn't attacking the Crocodiles, but getting multiple Crocs in was also pretty strong. Wait, Winslayer, did did you use did you use uh, over channel to summon two crocodiles in this fight in the same turn? Not the sa no, not in the same turn. So what did I you use your over channel for? I used over channel to miss in fortune summon. Oh yeah, yeah, smart, smart. I thought so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that misfortune actually was huge for you. Like that, rem that really reduced his damage output in the uh, the second line of attacks. Like the first line, he he made all his fumble rolls, but then there was like that turn where all of the misfortune stacks triggered all at once, and he actually, fumbled like six attacks in a row. Two, it literally killed two of my units. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the misfortune was as as these random things are. Not very impressive at the very beginning of the game, but then you started getting high rolls, and then it then it really, really paid itself off. Yeah, just I don't now now Ninju just does not have the to the tools necessary to kill um actually this ruler at all. I think on Winslay's side, because Winslay has a. Uh, natural regeneration here so yeah i think that's i think that's it now we just get to see if i walk away i die here yeah that's a lot of damage on him all right so winslayer went in on this hero rather than the uh the astral serpent which i think does make sense because the astral serpent is at least going to disappear uh, no, rather it has the, the astral membrane and the refuge. So there's still a lot of defensive tools on that that piece itself. Um, and he removes the Inquisitor the way that astral serpents do. Somehow it's gonna get all the stuns it needs. I mean, like hypothetically, I guess. You fumble. Oh boy! Oh boy! Yep, and the, the zombies are going in. The zombies are going in. But if Winslayer can kill all of the actual pieces for, um, for, uh... That, that was, yeah, that was, uh, the Misfortune fumble damage to you. So if you have a Misfortune stack, and, stack on you and you roll a fumble, you take damage now. Um, as a buff to Misfortune. It's what, like, eight physical? Yeah, it's eight physical. Yeah, these summons count as your unit, so you don't have the outnumbered thing, I think, yet. This is, this is so many decaying zombies. So many decaying zombies. Can can Winslaya overcome all of the all of the zombies here? I think he can. Eight damage on a fumble. Wow. That could have killed you. Yeah. Mis misfortune can be good if you do not have fortune effects yourself to counter it. it can be very 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 good if you're lucky if you're lucky all right so what does Winslay have here he can eliminate that snow spirit good um, this snow spirit of his probably wants to disengage from these decaying zombies. I think his best bet to, to dealing with the zombies is just let them kill themselves because they do all have decay naturally, um, and so they will. No, it got slowed. I think. Uh, Reaver, yeah. So there are lots of ways to consistently counter mists. Mists biggest problem is, or rather, the, e the easiest counter to miss is things that do auto hits. So here, for instance, um, we don't have any Inquisitors that we can open anymore because they are all dead. But Inquisitors have an automatic hit attack. Um, Stormbringers have an automatic hit attack. Most of the Battle Mage effects are uh, automatic hits AOEs. So there are a lot of different tools that you have access to in game that ignore the evasion problems um, when you're fighting against someone who is using Tome of Mists. And then if you're worried about the other pieces, like you're having issues in terms of them stacking tons of diff different types of buffs, uh, there are different tools in games for removing them. Um, 
Tome of Scrying has ways to apply Mark, but I think that most of the time, the, the easiest way to get around uh, the Tome of Mists is to just not not hit, not have not have to roll hits at all. If you have a, a true strike because you have a Spring Fury in your army, that's a great way to get around uh, Tome of Mists. I, I think that mostly if you're trying to fight against Mists, then just fight them in a dimension where they can't win um, and they they cannot they cannot get around True Strike. That is that is a real workhorse. All right, so Winslay is getting in there with his last turn of his last crocodile here. And takes out that astral, and I think well, that's it. that's it. Yeah, that's it. So that was your last real unit, and then the uh, the zombies unfortunately died. Wow. That wow, was I that was incredible, that. man. I I can't believe that either. <laughs> well played, dude. I'm telling you, it's just the crocodiles. I think I think you needed more defensive tools there, Ninju. I think I think you didn't have defensive tools either, right? So yeah, I know. You force your opponent to have defensive tools, and you don't well, need them because you're crocodiles. Dude. No, you you should have yeah, defensive economy. tools. You should always have defensive tools. They're good. He did he have defensive tools? No. No, and I think that that was not an optimal build for Winslaya, and that's okay. I can't believe you got no, two think, mind control off like that, think, and it still wasn't enough. The, I, I kind of agree. Crocodiles are... I it's think a lot Primal, to put Primal does like not that. need defensive tools, because the crocodile, the summons are your oh. defensive tools. The action economy of that means you're taking less attacks, right? Uh, depends on who you're fighting against. I mean, that, that is not what happened when Winslaya ran up into, uh, into, into zombie. That was, that was very, very different. Yeah, I, you I can wasn't totally ignore the you're, animals you're, entirely. If, if you're using tier 1 units, and you're just ignoring the several crocodiles a turn that are getting three times attacks on you, I'm not so sure that's okay. No, it's not that that's okay. It's that you you can set up damage uh, in such a way that, like, like he was killing he was killing Winslay's crocodiles with, like, one action on his tier 1 units because he was doing so much damage. Oh, yeah. That so was that, was, like that was pretty good. Zombie's an actual not really. Um, he mostly just plays with us these days. Yeah, but his whole thing is coming up with like really absurd builds. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a very creative build. Uh, but I I do think I do think that primals are good in manuals. But uh, like we we have we have played with them a lot, Ninju, and we have we have seen them be good and we have seen them be bad, and have they have seen, their have own. Have you ever seen zombie lose while playing as primal? Yeah, we. The zombie won like everything we did for like the first six months, but but then he didn't play as much, and now and now we've beaten him with lots Where's of different the things. He lost as I, I want to uh, keep talking about this, but I gotta yeah. head out here. Uh, yeah, we gotta head out. All right. That is the end of the stream for today. Um, tomorrow we are going to be doing probably our big fight in the uh, one of one of our multiplayer games. I think we're doing one of the multiplayer games tomorrow. I don't remember which one. Pro probably our big fight with Eagles versus Eagles against Winslaya. I think that's where we're heading uh, for our next our next game tomorrow. But I'll see you then.